we welcome you to Auburn, Alabama, to the campus of Auburn University, where college football passion and tradition are second to none. Today, all eyes are on new head coach Gene Chizik. Chizik, a controversial hire just nine months ago tonight, has a chance to win over the Auburn faithful. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN U College Football Primetime presented by City as part of Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. It's Louisiana Tech traveling to SEC country to take on the Auburn Tigers. Hello, everyone. So glad you could join us on a gorgeous Saturday evening with my partner, former Washington Husky quarterback Brock Heward. I'm Eric Collins. Should be a lot of fun tonight and all season long. We will be in the SEC at some venue each and every Saturday night. And in case you haven't noticed, each of the last three years, Brock, someone from the SEC has won the national championship. Yeah, I think the Big 12 South, Eric, may have an argument. They play some football there. But top to bottom, one through 12, no more talented conference in America than the SEC. Now the big story here in Auburn for the last nine months has been the head coaching hire of Gene Chizik. You talk to people in Auburn country and they say he's either a wizard or some people, Brock, say he's a bad hire. Well, as an assistant, he's a wizard. He was the coach of the year here in 04 when they were undefeated. He won a national championship coordinating the Texas defense. The question is, can be a head coach? 5-19 and 19 at Iowa State, that's the question he'll have to answer, and it starts tonight. Well, moments ago, our own Beth Mowens had a chance to catch up with Gene Chizik and ask him a couple of questions. Thank you, Eric. Well, Coach, the last time you were here was as a part of the 4 undefeated team. Can you describe your emotions now as you come back to Auburn as the head coach? Well, I just feel really blessed. You know, I have so many great memories from this field. And uh, just feel really blessed to be the head coach here now. Tiger Walk, just the whole game day experience is as good as it gets. How have your experiences with Iowa State the last couple of years helped prepare you to get Auburn ready for this season? Well, I don't think there's any question right now. Your first time going through being a head coach right now, there's a lot of things that you got to learn from and a lot of things you got to overcome. No doubt about it, I wouldn't look back and do it any different. It was a great time in my life, and this is going to be even better. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Eric? Thank you, Beth. Well, one of the guys that Gene Chizik beat out for the job is in the building today. Louisiana Tech head coach Derek Dooley was in consideration. He's got that program going in the right direction. The first bowl win in 31 years in Ruston. He returns four all whack performers. He wants to know whether this team is a championship caliber team. He'll know a lot more about them after the 60 minutes tonight here at Auburn. Now for the second consecutive year, Derek Dooley and the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs are taking on an SEC team to begin the campaign. Last year at home in Ruston, Louisiana, they knocked off Sylvester Croom's Mississippi State Bulldogs. But here at Auburn, Alabama, totally different story. We're ready to go. Auburn has won the toss, and Gene Chizik's bunch has elected to receive the football. Louisiana Tech will kick this one off as Terrell Zachary is back deep to field it. Mario Fannin also back with him. Fannin wears number 27. Zachary wears number 81. Freshman Matt Nelson kicks it off, and we're underway. Short kick fielded by Fannin at the 10-yard line. And Fannin, still on his feet, gets out to about the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. Return of 15 yards. That's where the Tigers will begin 2009. New quarterback, well, kind of a new quarterback, splitting time last year was Chris Todd. You talk about the head coach, Gene Chizik, having to endure some tough years at Iowa State. How about Chris Todd? You start your career at Texas Tech. You transfer to junior college. You come here. You hurt your shoulder. You get benched. He's endured a lot in his five years. He's ready to play some football tonight. Todd started five games a year ago, split the job with Cody Burns. Burns has since been converted to a wide receiver. We're going to see him all over the field today. Running on first down, this is Ben Tate, the senior from Newark, Maryland, who picks up eight yards. Rock, who are your impact players? Uh, it starts right there with Ben Tate. He's right near the, the top ten list at Auburn in a running back position. Watch their left tackle, Lee Zimba. He started every game since his freshman year, and when the Tigers go to defense, no one rushes the passer better than Antonio Coleman. You're going to see a faster-paced Auburn team this year. New offensive coordinator, Gus Malzahn, will end around. Left side still on his feet. Terrell Zachary gets the first down and a bunch more out to the 41-yard line. A pickup of 10. 
on the top of your screen zipping past the offensive starters for the Auburn Tigers. That'll be followed by the defensive starters for Louisiana Tech. Cody Burns has checked into the game for the first time. He replaces Chris Todd at the quarterback spot. And a handoff. Ontario McAuliffe, his first carry of his career, the freshman from Fort Meade, Florida, picks up nine. Auburn just ripping off jumps to the garden. And you're going to see a lot of freshmen playing tonight for Auburn. Five defensively in the two deep, four offensively. McAuliffe's a guy, they like his burst. Gus Malzahn was at Arkansas with McFadden. Feels like McCallum's got the same kind of burst as McFadden. They give it out to McCallum again. This time, picks up just a couple, but that's going to be enough for the first down. DeAnthony Boo Smith, his first tackle, we'll probably call his name quite a bit. He wears number five in white for Louisiana Tech. And instantly the 85,000 here are quickly understanding this isn't Tony Franklin's spread. This is a spread system, a two-minute system that's going to pound the football. Gus Malzahn says he wants his team to be the fastest team in all of football. Ben Tate, another carry. This time a pickup of four. What's unique, Eric, about this system is all of that shotgun, and typically shotgun teams in college football today run a lot of that spread zone, a lot of that option zone out of it. Not Auburn. They are a downhill football team from the shotgun. Now Todd looks over to the sideline. He's got an intricate, intricate play calling system. Bannon and Tate next to him in the backfield. And they fake the Tate quarterback keeper. And Todd is downed after a pickup of a pair. Tackle on the play made by Kamani Washington, Jr. from Gibson, Louisiana. It's going to be a real feeling out process early for Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator for Louisiana Tech. He's a guy that likes to be aggressive, but he just felt with this system tonight, he really needed to take a look at the formations. You'll see a very stagnant Louisiana Tech defense early. First third down of the ball game, third down at three. Todd again from the gun. Plenty of time. Now being chased just has to throw it away. Nobody home, and they're going to throw a flag. Adrian Logan and Randy Grigsby on the pressure, and Chris Todd just threw it to no one in particular. Very simple route there, just a two-receiver route that kept a lot of guys in to block. No one open. Todd tries to get rid of the football, but you've got to throw it to an area where your receivers are unless you're out of the pocket, and that's the conversation going on right now. Is the quarterback out of the box? If so, he can throw it away. If he's in that box, it's got to be in the vicinity of his wide receiver. Our referee is Steve Shaw. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 85 on the defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Wow, Derek Dooley can't believe it. They call it on Randy Grigsby. Wow, no conversation about throwing it away. Boy, that's a tough call right there. We can't see the tail. We'll get a better look here, and I guess it's a shot to the head. The quarterback, unfortunately, being pulled down there. Todd Grigsby, as best he can, has got to try to avoid that blow to the head. Get those QBs in the head, Eric. You're going to get a flag. So because of the penalty, they convert on third down. A little chicanery. Give it to Tate. And Tate is swamped behind the line of scrimmage and loses a yard. Here's a good look at the new offensive coordinator, Gus Malzahn. Wasn't too bad at Tulsa, was he? Oh. About 800 points a game, 600 yards, led the country in total offense. Very intricate. You could see already lots of different formations moving people in and out. Second down. Pass to the sideline is complete. Darvin Adams, his first catch of 2009, a pickup of 10. Darvin, a young guy, one of the more experienced, believe it or not. Having played a little bit last year with three catches, you'll see a lot of true freshmen from Auburn at the receiver position. Well-timed throw and catch there to the boundary. Third down and one, short yardage. They give to Tate. Tate the first down and more. Down to the 12-yard line. Terry Carter finally with the tackle, but not before another movement of the chains for Auburn. Louisiana Tech right now, Eric's doing a nice job of staying pat but they're not aggressive, and that's the dilemma that to Tommy Spangler talked about early. Against this system where you see so much movement, it's hard to be aggressive and hit it downhill, yet at the same time, you've got to be firm and aggressive. 
Again, the gift to Tate. Eyes right tackle. And is dropped after a pickup of about five. He's inside the 10. It'll be second down. And they can get a first down at about the two-yard line. Auburn a season ago. All sorts of problems. Finishing with just five wins and seven losses. Really, in the second half of the season, their only win was against a, an FCS team, and that being UT Martin. Cody Burns into the game in the Wildcat formation. He's number 18. He's got the ball, fakes the handoff. And we've got Whistle stopping this one. Whistle flags on the field. Before the snap, false start, number 73 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. One of your impact players, Lee Zimba, called for the penalty. Yeah, pretty obvious there, trying to get the timing just a half step too quick for Zimba. Second down at 13 at the backfield of McCaleb and Fannin. Next to the quarterback, Chris Todd. And they give it to McCaleb. And he gets back what they lost. They'll bring up a third down at about five. That earlier third down, such a critical error there with the roughing and the passer. Derek Dooley knows his guys are undersized up front. Anytime you have a WAC school against an SEC school, the battle is in those trenches. A concern for him is to keep this defense and that defensive line on the field too long. Critical third down here in the red zone. Todd with time, tries the end zone, passes high, and it's going to be out of bounds. Catch was made by Darvin Adams, but no chance to stay in the field of play. He was corralled by Terry Carter, making things difficult. Just a step late there for Chris. That when you're throwing into that very tight boundary in college football, especially an outbreaking route there down in the red zone, you have to anticipate that. He held it just an instant. He wanted to make sure his receiver got open. Gus Malzahn, you see the conversation. You just got to anticipate that, or else it's going to be a half step out of bounds. Wes Byer now in his third season as the place kicker for Auburn will attempt the 25 yarder. Up and down year a season ago for Byron. This one is true. So his first kick of 2009 is a good one. And the Auburn Tigers draw first blood. Five minutes and change into this one. The home standing Auburn Tigers on top of Louisiana Tech. The Bulldogs will have the ball for the first time when we return. Laura Galindo here with your Sports Center U update. When we left the contest with Mississippi State, they were rolling over Jackson State. And right now, Mississippi State is still. Rolling over Jackson State. Corey Broomfield with the pick six. Mississippi State up 45 to seven. Complete highlights coming up at the half. Now let's go back to Eric and Brock. So far, so good for the Auburn Tigers. They lead Louisiana Tech by a score of three to nothing. First time these two schools have played each other on the gridiron in five years. Most recent game was won by the Auburn Tigers going away 52 to 7. That was that fantastic 2004 season. You see right away there a 12 play drive. You talk again about this is not your spread system. Chuck it all over the field. Ten runs, two passes on that five and a half minute drive. The electric Philip Leibitz is back deep. He wears number six. Couple of career kickoff returns for touchdowns. Also returned a punt for a touchdown. He's got it at the three yard line. And Livin could return out to the 27-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will start for the first time. Return of 25 yards. Well, Ross Jenkins, second year as a starter, the junior from Houston, Texas, comes on. And he's a winner. That's the bottom line with Ross. Six and two as a starter. He will manage the game. They love his grit, his toughness. He's a competitive guy. And this team squarely on his shoulders this season. Backfield behind him, Daniel Porter, number 20. He's one of the best in the whack. And they give it to Porter. Tries the left side. Stays on his feet, bounces off a couple of guys, and picks up the yard. 
Impact players for Louisiana Tech, Brock. You've seen two of them already. Philip Livas is the guy. He scores at running the ball. He scores at receiving. Last year, three touchdowns in the special teams guy game. He's their most electric player. Daniel Porter, he's number 11 all-time in school history, nearly 2,000 yards. And DeAnthony Smith, you'll notice him. He sticks out where's number five, a nose tackle. And they get the ball to Livas out in space. Makes the first man miss, gets the first down. That's what they want to do, get Livas out in the open. 15 yards on the pickup. And we talked to Frank Scalfo, the offensive coordinator at La Tech, and he was very adamant. He said, we've got to get Phillip touches all over this football field. He's got to touch it 12 to 15 times. It may be a quarterback, it may be a running back. We've got to get him in space because he's our one guy that can compete speed-wise with anybody at Auburn. Porter next to the quarterback. Livas goes in motion, snap goes awry, and it's going to be a big time loss. Antonio Coleman jumps on top of Jenkins, a loss of nine. Those are the type of plays that La Tech, if they're going to move the chains tonight, have to avoid. They have to stay on schedule. That one wasn't even close. Unfortunately, Lon Roberts, the center, he knew he had to get to that A gap in that snap. There's nothing Ross can do smart there to get down. Antonio Coleman flies over his head, avoid an even worse play by just falling on that football. And a lot of movement now. The quarterback Jenkins goes out wide right. It's a wildcat formation. They snap it right to Porter. And Porter gets out to the 36-yard line, but no more. It's going to bring up a third down and a bunch. And already you see number 90 on a few occasions. That's Nick Fairley, 6'5", 295. One of the better junior college defensive tackles in America. The coaches tell us tremendous upside. And they just simply want to see when these bright lights go on, how he responds. And right now on this series, flying all over the football field. Let's see what Louisiana Tech has in the grab bag. Third and 16. They need to cross the 50 and get to the 48. Jenkins with time. A little bit too high and outside, and a flag comes down late. Walter McFadden, probably their best quarterback, uh, may have been caught being a little bit handsy. Yeah, I don't think Gene likes that call one bit, and I'll tell you why, because that play was covered up. There was no chance. Two La Tech players in the same zone. McFadden did go up in the air and make contact with the body, but he throws that ball 100 times. There's no chance it's completed. Pass interference. Number six on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Unbelievable. You can read the lifts right there. Absolutely unbelievable. Again, a nice job by the secondary. You see the two receivers there, and that ball is six yards over Houston Tuminello's head. Six yards. I mean, that has no chance of being completed. And if you're Walter McFadden, you simply can't make any body contact and allow that referee to throw the flag. So a cheapy first down for the Bulldogs. They'll take it. They cross midfield. Mike Compton now into the game for the first time. He wears number 26. He's in the backfield for Louisiana Tech. They give it to Compton. He breaks through the line and picks up two, maybe three. Look at Gene Chizik's staff, Eric, and we met with them yesterday. And Gene handpicked a lot of guys from different programs. Ted Roof, he pulled away from the University of Minnesota. Gus Malzahn from Tulsa. Not one coach on this staff was at Auburn last year. He's assembled a quality, quality staff. He's very like-minded with Ted Roof, and right now committing eight guys to this box and making and daring La Tech to throw it. And around, this is Livis. And Livis to the 45, another phenomenal gain. They call it two. Zach Etheridge, junior safety, comes on to combine with Josh Bynes, the backer, to make the stop, and there is a flag down on the field. This could be a late hit. Personal foul, face mask, number four on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. What are you seeing on both sides? Eric, you're seeing a lot of energy, and, and there you see the face. Ooh, that, yeah, a couple of them. Again, that's Zach Etheridge there, number four, and anytime that head twists, that's a 15-yard penalty. But I think, I think what you're seeing early, and here's a shot of Ted Roof, is these guys are wound up and ready to play. They're tired of hitting everybody else. You see a late hit on the quarterback. You see the contact in the air on the pass. You see a face mask there. Early airs, guys ready and wound up to play. 
Jenkins hands it off to Livas. They really have been committed to getting the ball to Livas. And we've got another face mask penalty. Back to back face masks called against Auburn. Jake Ricks this time. Actually, I think it was Michael Goggins. Personal foul, face mask, number 49 on the defense. That penalty will be enforced from the previous spot, 15 yards, automatic first down. And you see Ted Roof keeping his composure. Gene Chizik earlier, yeah, just gets that hand into the face mask. Gene Chizik earlier simply telling Michael Goggins, settle down. Settle down, guys. I know you're ready to play this football game. You've had a physical spring ball. You've had a physical training camp. Just play your defense. Settle down. Three penalties on this drive. Four total for the Auburn Tigers. Haven't even played 10 minutes. Porter, left side. He's wrapped up around the face mask. No penalty this time. And it's a loss of two. Zach Etheridge with another stop. That's all he does is make tackles. Led this team last year in tackles. His counterpart in the secondary, Darren Bates, is a true freshman at Auburn. He's going to be that center field player. Keep it behind him. Because of that, you're going to see a lot of Zach Etheridge in this box. They're going to commit him to making tackles. There that time, he avoided the face mask and the headgear. Wrapped up nicely. Second down at 13. La Tech trying to avoid the negative plays. They're already quite possibly in field goal range. Jenkins to the zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs! Dennis Morris is tight end. His first catch, his first touchdown. We talked about the balance earlier for Auburn. Ten runs, just two passes. La Tech does a nice job of mixing that run up, and here they go empty, and that's the advantage when you have a 265-pound tight end that can run. He can beat linebackers. He can get on top of safeties. Dennis Morris is a senior. This program, these coaches really believe he has a chance to play at the next level. He keeps stretching the field like that. He just made. True freshman place kicker Matt Nelson scores his first point of his career. Touchdown, Dennis Morris. He had a vice-like grip on this one. 19 yards into the back of the end zone. There's no ripping the wall away from Dennis Morris. You were one of the many calling for that Charleston Southern upset against the Florida Gators. Not looking good. There's Jeff Dimp with the touchdown, making it 7 0. And Deontay Thompson just dropped the wide open pass. It would have made it 14 0. And then at Mississippi State, they love Chris Ralph. Four total touchdowns as the Bulldogs roll. Lowell thanks a bunch. Louisiana Tech answers an Auburn field goal with a touchdown. Morris, 19-yard score from his quarterback Jenkins. Auburn sure helped out. They committed three defensive penalties to keep drives alive. Well, Zachary, Ontario McCaleb back deep. Off his kickoff from Matt Nelson. Nelson just scored against the first collegiate point with the extra point a moment ago. McCaleb got the ball, starts at the 10. Full head of steam, crosses the 30 out to the 34. That's where Auburn will begin their second drive. Their first drive was fairly impressive, Brock. Yeah, they, they do a nice job within their offense. It's hard to define and describe, and that's a real compliment to Gus Malzahn because you'll see power football at times. You'll see wrinkles with the Wildcat. You'll see just traditional pitch and catch trying to throw those routes on time. And ben Tate is a bruiser on the field for 13 plays on that drive. Louisiana Tech cannot afford to, to have long drives against them tonight. Pitch out in the flat. Mario Fannin with the grab, a pickup of three yards. Brock, you talk about a 13-play drive for Auburn, but this is not a 13-play uh, drive that we may have seen in the past with the Tigers. It only took a little bit more than five minutes off the clock. And you're going to notice with Gus Malzahn, he said what to us yesterday, if you're used to watching him at Tulsa where he keeps the same personnel on the field, he doesn't have that versatility yet. Another run for Ben Tate, the senior. Barrels forward, close to first down marker, but he's a little bit short. And what I mean by that is at Tulsa, he kept those 11 guys on the field. He could run multiple different formations. 
and really get that offense up tempo. You already see tonight a lot more substitution than normal. That's simply because he's got to get more of his type of personnel in here. Once again, quickly back to the line of scrimmage. On third down and one, they power it over the left side for a first down. Pick up a four for Ben Tate. Running back you, isn't it? The one thing about Auburn, defensive linemen and running backs. That's what their faithful have been used to. They've seen for so many years and decades around here. Ben Tate's going to get a lot of carries this season. Play action. Todd with time. Middle of the field. Caught. Bannon in the slot. Big gainer. 25 yards for the Tigers. Tremendous pocket. Tremendous pocket around Chris Todd. Anytime, again, all that play action, all of that run, look at that. No one within five yards. That looks like seven on seven on the practice fields out here. Mario Fannin does a nice job of getting down the middle of the field and hooking up. Wildcat formation. Burns back into the game, takes the direct snap, keeps it himself, and Burns rumbles down to the 22 yard line. Gain of six on first down. Tempo, tempo, tempo. They make our job difficult <laughs> because they are just going. And again, look at the substitution. This is something that eventually Gus does not want to do so much. He doesn't want to give that defense any chance to catch their breath. But even with the substitution, they're still up tempo. Tate trying to elude some tacklers. Lose some ground, picks up some ground. Stays on his feet down to the 12 yard line before he's pushed out of bounds by Antonio Baker. Nine yard gain. And that's just the difference with Ben Tate, what makes him special at 220 pounds. The vision there, consistently keeping those eyes up, breaking tackles. That's why he's run for 2,000 yards in his career at Auburn. Another Wildcat situation. Todd is out, Burns back in. Burns the quarterback a year ago. Where's number 18? Fakes the handoff. And Burns nowhere to go. He's dropped. Adrian Logan got him right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one. And you can just see with all of this misdirection and play action and Wildcat, you get this defense thinking. That's what Auburn wants to do. Get that defense to think, not react. You gain that extra step when they are thinking, and you move these chains. Todd again, out wide right. This is Burns with the snap. And Burns crosses the 10 down to the 9. This has got to make Cody Burns feel at least useful. Remember, he was the starting quarterback for most of last season. Got beaten out by Chris Todd. But Gus Malzahn is very familiar with Cody Burns in their days back in high school football in Arkansas, finding ways to use the junior. It's a big third down. They got the stop in the red zone last time, did La Tech. There's one thing about moving the balls 20 to 20, moving the ball. It's another thing to score touchdowns. On third down and seven, time running down, and a timeout is called. Chris Todd wants to make sure everyone's on the same page. We'll take the timeout with him. Minute 55 remaining, first quarter. It's been an entertaining first 13 minutes of play. We'll be back with a big third down when we come back. Are you ready for the max? Are you ready for the max? We're always ready for the max. Yes! I'm ready for the max. Take your car to the max with quality Conoco gasoline. It's especially for life feeling like Maya. I'm Todd Cook, founder of 800 Credit Card Debt. Day in and day out, we help people just like Maya. Regular people who got in over their heads in credit card debt and want their lives back on track. At 800 Credit Card Debt, we'll help you find a payoff plan you can live with. One that could work with your creditors to eliminate penalties, lower your interest rates, and even reduce what you owe. Don't let the word bankruptcy enter your thoughts. Call us, because you can pay off your credit cards and still have money left over each month. And the best part is, you'll feel like yourself again. Maya did. Make the call today. Get rid of your credit card debt once and for all. Call 1-800-985-3191. Glad to have you join us here for Saturday primetime football here in the SEC. Louisiana Tech on top of Auburn, but that lead may be in doubt. The Auburn Tigers are knocking on the door. Big third down and seven coming up. Derek Dooley trying to get his defense off the field with a stop here. So critical to score that early touchdown for La Tech to get up on Auburn. 
Auburn couldn't convert in the red zone last time. I think Derek Dooley will take this game into the fourth quarter. If they can, if he'll, obviously he wants to stop them, but to give up the yardage 20 to 20 and give up field goals to get this game to the second half, that's where he's been so brilliant at La Tech over the last two years. Last year, three fourth quarter comebacks, eight and three and one possession games in his career at La Tech. The principle of get the game to the second half and win it in the fourth quarter. Todd under center. Third down at seven. Throws. Complete. Fannin out of the backfield with the catch and the first down. They needed seven. They got eight. Nice job of not panicking there for Chris Todd. Had plenty of room there. Again, good protection up front. He was patient. Puts the ball right to the sidelines. That's a precise, accurate throw. Just what Gus Malzahn wants. And good patience from the veteran quarterback. Cody Burns back in the game in the Wildcat formation. McCaleb goes in front of him. Burns takes it himself and scores. How about that for a drive for the Auburn Tigers? They march all the way down for six. If anyone was worried about Cody Burns' career at Auburn and what he would do after he was demoted as a quarterback, I think you're seeing tonight he's going to get plenty of touches within this system. Extra point is true for Byram. For the second time today, Auburn on top of Louisiana Tech. Cody Burns takes the direct snap, finds a seam, and scores the first touchdown. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by City. City never sleeps. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. A good start for the Auburn Tigers. Taking on Louisiana Tech out of the whack. 13 and a half minutes, Auburn on top of Louisiana Tech by a score of 10 to 7. Kick off by Wes Byram. Fielded by Livis at the four yard line. And Livis through the first gap, gets out to the 25, and that's it. Pick up of 21. Let's go back to that touchdown just scored by Auburn. You know, we talked to Gene Chizik yesterday, and he said, I want a downhill, hard nosed football team. Look at left guard there, Mike Berry. That's 315 pounds coming downhill on middle linebacker Adrian Cole. This is not your zone blocking system. This isn't your lateral, let's, let's read some zone option. This is downhill, hits you in the mouth football. That's what he wanted. That's why he went out and got Gus Malzahn. 22 plays, 17 runs thus far for Auburn. Second possession of the season for the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. Quick pitch and catch. Livest with another grab. And he's out of bounds at the 32-yard line, a gain of seven. We talked about Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator at La Tech, needing to get a feel for what Auburn would do offensively. You're seeing the same thing from Ted Roof defensively here at Auburn. Yes, he's committing that eighth defender to the box. But you've not seen any blitzes. Partly, you have a freshman free safety back there, but also trying to get a feel is Ted Roof for the formations and personnel of La Tech. Livis out of the game. They hand it off to the first man through. Daniel Porter gets the first down. Porter, first team all whack a season ago, rushed for over 1,000 yards. Averaged 5.2 yards per carry and scored nine touchdowns. And this is not your traditional whack team. This is not New Mexico State and Utah State and throw it all over the football field. This is a team that is run first. Five returning offensive linemen. They like to pound the football. That's what they do best. Swing out to Livis. Livis dragged down at the 45 yard line by Walter McFadden. And send you back to the studio. Lowell Galindo standing by. Lowell. Well, guys, Boomer Sooner off to a pretty good start in Arlington, Texas, taking on BYU. Cougars made a mistake by botching a punt return, so Sam Bradford taking advantage, as he usually does, to Ryan Royals. 7 zip OU. Thank you, Lowell. Second down and short. Porter spins out, a little bit short of the first down marker, pickup of one. 
another way to slow a defense down, Eric, is to have two tight ends. And that's what also what La Tech is capable of having on the football field. You saw Morris earlier with the touchdown, both senior veteran tight ends. And when you can get in that formation, you keep base, rate, base defense on the field, you have a chance to slow down any defense. Well, that'll do it for the first quarter of play. It's going to be a big third down and one for Louisiana Tech when we come back. What will Derek Dewey decide to do to try and keep this team on the field? An exciting first 15 minutes of play. So far, so good for both clubs offensively. Who will stop who first? You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. We've had three drives so far. All of them resulted in points. A field goal and a touchdown for Auburn. Derek Dooley's Louisiana Tech has had it once. They scored a touchdown. This is their second possession. They face a critical third and one. They need to convert it if they want to stay on the field. Quarter deep in the backfield. Now moves forward to get the call. R.P. Stewart in motion. Quarterback keeper, first down, Bulldogs. Well, it's going to depend on the spot. I thought that he had it. Looked like he gained significant yards. Did not get a great spot. They're going to call the chains in. I really like that technique though by Ross Jenkins. You'll see often quarterbacks get that snap Eric and stand straight up. It's the worst thing you can do as a quarterback. You need to stay in athletic position. No hesitation there. He took the snap got his pads down and I'd agree with you not in a real friendly spot. Oof. By a half a biscuit. <laughs> now first decision of 2009 for Derek Dooley. He's going. He's going to go for it. He's going to make a statement here. And I think he's looked at his defense. The last two possessions, DeAnthony Smith may be knocked out of this football game. He's seen Auburn go and march down the field. He knows these possessions are such a premium offensively. And this is an inch. Now roll the dice for the Bulldogs. The butt heads with one of the best defensive lines in the SEC. They got it. And then some. Porter still on his feet down to the 44 yard line. They needed maybe about three inches. They got 10 yards. Really nice play call there by Frank Selfo. Same formation, same motion. Everything looked like that quarterback sneak. And you could see Auburn committed to stopping that. Adam Herring, the linebacker there, beat on that seam route for a touchdown there. Loses contain. Big first down for La Tech. Porter leaves the game to get a blow. Mike Compton, great special teamer, comes in in the backfield next to Jenkins. Four receivers in the game. And before the snap of penalty. Before the snap, false start, number 67 on the offense, five yard penalty, first down. Now the penalty goes against Louisiana Tech. Let's go down on the field. Beth, what's going on? Well, Daniel Porter able to get around the edge to pick up that first down. The game plan for him today, the coaches want him to get tackled by more defensive backs than defensive linemen because at 5'9", 190, he has a tendency to get banged up He'll hold up a whole lot better if he doesn't have the defensive lineman weighing in on him. And so far, he's shown a good job of getting into space and getting hit by the smaller guys. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, good start virtually for everyone in that first quarter for Louisiana Tech offensively. This play here, as we get started in the second quarter, not so much. Jenkins is caught behind the line by Craig Stevens. 
if you're La Tech, you've got to be awfully careful with slow developing play action passes. One of the strengths of this front seven of Auburn is they can run. And maybe none run better than strong side linebacker Craig Stevens on the sack. Loss of 17 on the sack. Back to the ground they go on second and a bunch. And they get three of it back. Daniel Porter going to bring up a third down at 14. Antonio Coleman, nice tackle there. He came back to school this season for one reason and one reason only, and that was to improve his defense in the run game. 14 and a half sacks. He's one sack away from the top 10 all time at Auburn. Could have left for the draft like two of his mates did. He decided to come back to school, improve his game, improve his run defense. Does a nice job chasing that play down the line. Now we'll see what his pass rush is like. Third down at 14. Underneath. Trying to set something up. DJ Morrow just swarmed. That play was doomed to begin with. Once again, number 90 showing up. That's Nick Fairley. It's a good recruiting class. Gene Chizik came in. The one thing he did was energize. Lane Kiffin got all the talk in the SEC because he was out there talking. Gene Chizik, a lot of energy in this recruiting class. Got a D'Angelo Benton. Got a Nick Fairley. They wanted to see what the big kid would do, the former junior college D tackle. And number 90's made his presence known thus far. First time today that any defense has stopped an offense. Redshirt freshman punter Cade Glasgow will kick. And Glasgow's first collegiate punt is a high spinner. Mario Fannin bobbles it. Loose on the ground. And I think Auburn's jumped on it. Woof. That was almost a disaster for the Tigers. But they keep the football. Lose a couple of yards, almost lose the football. But Auburn will be on offense when we come back. The perfect combination of cardio and strength training delivers total body results. Weeder, the authority in strength, introduces the Weeder Power Belt, the perfect combination of cardio and strength training. Only a power belt increases your cardio for maximum calorie burn while engaging every muscle in your body for more strength and definition. It's not muscle isolation, it's muscle integration. And only Weeder Innovation gives you seven kettlebells in one. The seven in one Weeder Power Belt, valued at over $300, is yours for just three easy payments of $39.99. The Power Bell can build the body you want, guaranteed. Order now and receive the ultimate Power Bell workout DVD. Train with former U.S. Special Forces member and Power Bell Pro Michael Skog. Train with me and get in the best shape of your life. Plus, get the Weeder Fitness Journal free. The Power Bell rocked my body. Weeder Power Bell, all you need. Call 1-800-332-3154 or go online to thepowerbell.com. Auburn on top of tennis, Louisiana Tech by a score of 10 to 7. Monday evening, catch two college football shows on ESPNU. First at 5 Eastern, Crunch Time will deliver the entire closing minutes and moments of all the significant and close college football games of the previous weekend. Then at 6 Eastern, Lowell Galindo, Tom Luganville, and former Auburn head man Tommy Tuberville, they'll dissect and analyze the new polls and preview the next week's matchups on ESPNU. Inside the Poles, that's crunch time at 5 Eastern, followed by Inside the Poles, presented by 76 at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's good to see Tommy Tuberville landing on his feet after 10 quality years here at Auburn. And he was fantastic with his punch back in 2004 with Gene Chizik as his defensive coordinator, running the table but not winning the national championship. And now Tommy out of football, at least coaching this season here in 2009 replaced by that man his former defensive coordinator Gene Chizik. Yeah, quite a run as an assistant Frank Royals award winner assistant of the year in 04 goes to Texas wins a national championship as their coordinator fell on hard time trying to rebuild Iowa State but Jay Jacobs and the Auburn University of Auburn believed in him and made that hire this offseason. Ontario Michaela deep in the backfield just behind Chris Todd, who slips and wraps around the handoff. Kind of an ugly play to begin with, but it's ended up to be pretty pretty. A first down. That play had no chance. It looked like right out of the chute. 
but Michaela picks up 12 yards. And that was really one of the main concerns for Derek Dooley and his staff and Tommy Spangler in particular, D coordinator. There you see Todd bobble backwards, is tackling in the open field. The speed of Auburn. I know they've been down, they've got 75 scholarships, said Derek Dooley, but they can still run, and we've got to tackle in space. McCaleb stays in the game. This time he's pass blocking as Todd wants a bunch going deep, looking for D'Angelo Benton, and it's incomplete. Let's get an update on the Florida Gators. Back to the studio we go in Lowell Galindo. Yeah, and it boils down to Tim Tebow doing what he does best, be awesome. Tim Tebow with his first touchdown of the season. They are toying with Charleston Southern, 21 zip. Eric, I know you were calling for the upset. I don't think it's happening, man. Oh, you're pinning me down for the upset. <laughs> Thanks, Lowell. Yeah, Tim Tebow, man. You just kind of knew that he wasn't going to have any kind of letdown in this game number one after the way that they finished their season a year ago. Timeout on the field. Louisiana Tech calls it. 10-23 remaining, first half. Gene Chizik, his first game as the head man here at Auburn, trying to erase the memory of 10 straight losses to end last season when he was with Iowa State, trying to pick up a W here in the first goal round with the Tigers. So far, so good. Auburn on top of La Tech by three. Chris Todd, the senior from Elizabethtown, Kentucky, out of the shotgun, fakes the handoff. Tons of time, spins it out, incomplete. Looking into the flat for Darvin Adams. Third down to 10. Let's go down on the field. Beth, what's happening with Louisiana Tech? Well, their best defender is out of the ball game right now. Senior lineman DeAnthony Smith got stepped on the stomach and got the wind knocked out of him and was experiencing some stomach pain. He is being reevaluated in the locker room right now. They do not expect to see him before half. That is big, Beth. Thank you. And Boo Smith was first team all whack a year ago. Third down at 10. Underneath, pass complete to Tate, but no chance to move anywhere. Tackle quickly made by Solomon Randall. Again, this front for Auburn right now against the four man rush is dominating it. Chris Todd, plenty of time there but really sound defense in those zones for Tommy Spangler. That's the one thing you watch his defenses. They don't give up zones very often. You've got to earn it third and 10 situation. Everybody covered up down the field. They leave the check down open that time in space. They make a sound and sure tackle. First forced punt of the year. Clinton Durst will kick it away. Senior Durst last season averaging 42 yards per boot. Philip Leibitz, will he get a chance to touch it? Nope, he's going to have to just get away from this bouncer. And it's going to be downed at the 23-yard line. Punt of 48 yards, so a good start to the season for Clinton Durst. Well, interesting situation this year across the country. The top three Heisman finishers a year ago all returning for another season. What a face of college football. You talk about fantastic players on the field and quality, quality human beings, all three of those guys off the field. The identity of college football right now in those guys' hands in a very good place. Third possession for Louisiana Tech. A little pitch and catch underneath. Catch is made. That's Houston Tuminello, his first grab of the year. Pickup of nine for the sophomore from Gilmer, Texas. We're giving a lot of credit to Auburn up front. This group for La Tech, all five guys back from last year. Second team all leaguer there. Rob McGill, their left tackle. They're also doing a nice job against the four man rush. Make handoff, and a ball is loose. It's a fumble. Auburn football. Todd never really had a good handle on it. And the Auburn Tigers have the ball. Nick Fairley comes up with a loose possession. And that's just a critical error you can't have if you're Derek Dooley in La Tech. I told you Auburn doesn't run a lot of that read option. And that's become so popular in college football today. That quarterback, Ross Jenkins, puts the ball in the belly of Daniel Porter. And based on that defensive end, 
he either tucks it or he gives it to Daniel Porter. There's some hesitation, the fumble, an enormous turnover in your end of the football field. And how many times have we said Nick Fairley's name in this first half for Auburn? I'm not sure, but Jake Ricks, the senior from Muscle Shoals, may have poked that out. He had some pressure in the backfield, and he may have got his mitt on that football. Todd wants to capitalize on it quickly. Down the right sideline, incomplete. Fannin out of bounds when he makes the grab. I like that call by Gus Malzahn. You see how many times offensive coordinators in, in, in turnover situations where you gain that ball will take a shot. You've gained the momentum, take a shot down the field. That time Fannin runs the wheel route, just doesn't give Todd enough room on the boundary, just out of bounds. Fullback John Douglas moves out into the flank. Ben Tate moves up a couple of yards. Wrap round handoff to Tate. And Tate down to the 23 yard line. Stays in bounds. Clock will continue to move. Nice job there by right tackle Andrew McLean, the fifth year senior. He's making his first start here at Auburn. Does a nice job of hooking the end that time. Matt Broha. If you're Bro High and you're a four-man rush, you've got to contain that gap on those draw plays. That time, Andrew McCain wins the one-on-one -on -one battle. And Tate gives you a very manageable third-and-one situation. This is Kerry Carter, sophomore cornerback from West Monroe, Louisiana, who's being attended to. Terry Carter can officially say he is the fastest man in the Western Athletics Conference. He won the 100-meter dash last spring in the outdoor championships. And if there's an area, if you were to ask Derek Dooley before the game where you cannot afford an injury, I guarantee you he would tell you cornerback. Two new corners this season, both third-year guys who've waited their turn, but behind them a junior college transfer in Elijah Juan Page and a true freshman in Quinn Giles. Not a lot of depth at the corner position. So on a third down and one, Cody Burns checks back into the game, number 18. Splitting time a season ago with Chris Todd as the quarterback, now being used quite a bit in Auburn's new Wildcat formation. You also see the big fullback in there, number 30, John Douglas. He's the guy that's going to come in and lead block. Todd split out wide right. Burns going to keep it himself, has the first down and more. Down to the 10-yard line. Burns has been impressive. A pickup of 12. You call his number when a guy like John Douglas goes into this football game. He's a true fullback, 6'2", 240, recruited in the old system to be that downhill fullback. Does a nice job of springing Cody Burns on that play. Fresh set it down. Burns again, this time not so successful. Caught at the line of scrimmage. Maybe barrels forward for a yard. Jay Dudley there, the strong side linebacker. The staff was anxious to see, again, another first-year starter for La Tech. They feel at 6'3", 225, he's got a frame and can run. They just want to see him in this environment, how he handles starting. Tate. Down to the sixth. Ball may have come out late. It did. Bulldog football. Tate gives it right back to Louisiana Tech. Matt Broha jumps on it. Wow, Auburn knocking at the door. Spits the bit, gives the ball right back to La Tech. The one thing that Gus Malzahn, I said to him yesterday, tell me one thing if you can come out of this football game. The ball does definitely come out. You come out of this football game, what do you want to accomplish? And he said, no dumb penalties and we can't have turnovers. If we don't turn the ball over physically, we should be bigger and stronger and faster and take advantage. They're a critical turnover in the red zone. Each side with the turnover now throwing the first half. Porter snuffed out at the line of scrimmage. Nick Fairley again, we call his name. It's always interesting for these coaches when you get a junior college player in and isn't here for spring ball. You get into training camp, he flashes. How do they play 
when it's for real. How do they play in front of 86,000 people tonight? Some rise to the occasion, others get small. Nick Fairley rising to the occasion tonight. Tight end Dennis Morris may need some help. He just got blown away by Fairley on that play. Underneath pass is caught to Manello, his second grab. He is going to be close to first down yards. He's got it, a pickup of 12. He said on that last drive, when Auburn has rushed four, Nick Fairley, those big guys in the middle, have contained the line of scrimmage in the run game, but have not got a lot of push in the pass game. This La Tech crew up front, they're scrappy. You see them in the pregame. They're not the, the prettiest guys without their pads on, but they love to play the game together. They've got Pete Perot, their offensive line coach, missed last season with a triple bypass surgery. 21 years at La Tech. He's back, and he's got these guys up front in the pass game playing very well. Play clock winding down. They're going to have to hurry. Oh, they just get it off. Hand off. Nothing doing. Pick up of a pair. Gain of two yards right up the gut. That'll bring up second down and eight. Louisiana Tech did end the season on a high note. They were eight and five on the year, and they won their bowl game. They were the only WAC team that won their bowl game. Boise State can't make that statement. And they made the switch, and I think they had that success last year because they made the switch to Ross Jenkins. A redshirt junior about halfway through the year last year felt like he gave them a better chance to win. Went 6-2. and two. You see tonight off to a great start at 7-7. Seven for seven. Another handoff. Quarter. Out to the 26, maybe 27. It's going to bring up third down and manageable. And Ross really epitomizes in a lot of ways a lot of the personnel for La Tech, especially matched up against an SEC powerhouse. He's not the biggest guy, he's not the flashiest, he's not gonna throw it 70 yards, but he'll play within the system. He believes in this staff and in his team, and he, he's exactly what Derek Dooley wants in this program, and I believe why they've taken that next step. They believe they can go anywhere and win. Do they believe they can pick up a third and one? They wanna pass for it. Underneath, Tumanello, second catch of the drive, third of the ball game. First down, Bulldogs. Poised. Isn't he poised? You look at Ross Jenkins out here. Is he phased by 86,000 in orange? No, you're not going to be phased when you've got that kind of pocket in front of you. And again, these Auburn Tigers, Mike Blanc there you see at 290 pounds, and Jake Ricks at 292, and Nick Fairley at 295. These are big run stuffers, but they're not getting any push in the pass rush. Tyrone Duplessis gets the fake and instead they spit it out. The tight end Morris with the grab and he's out across the 40 to the 42. 11 yards on that catch and run. Really nice balance. You can't go away from the run game. Even though there's been little success tonight, that run will set up this play action pass. That run will slow down that defensive line and right now, Frank Selfo sitting next to us up here in the booth. He's really got a quarterback in rhythm and has Auburn on their heels. Freshman Tyrone Duplessis is still in the game. He wears number 22 in the backfield. This time they give it to him. Makes the first man miss and then is wrapped up violently by Adam Herring. Adam Herring, number 31, credited with that tackle. That was a stiff right in the hole. Tyrone Duplessis, a true freshman from New Orleans. Came up this summer, the coaching staff told us, came up to summer school, and he hasn't been home to New Orleans. There you see a good shot of Frank Selfo. He's mixing up his personnel groupings. He's going two tight ends. He has the glasses on there. He's going four wides, three wides, multiple formations. Really slowing down Auburn. Duplessis out, quarter back in. Complete. Out of the backfield, Dustin Mitchell, his fullback, picks up seven. So Jenkins hasn't been afraid to use his tight end. We've seen him complete passes to his backs, his wide receivers, and now he goes to the fullback. And there you see the balance. I mean, 17 rush, 10 pass, been much more successful through the air, but that run game has done just enough. It set up that play action pass just enough, and these two tight ends are doing a really nice job right now for La Tech. Third and three. In trouble. Flag down. Incomplete. 
There's a tussle in the backfield right now. I don't know if that was Louisiana Tech or Auburn doing something not allowed. We'll have to figure this one out. More than likely a holding call back there in the pocket or a face mask. There you see Ross Jenkins gamesmanship play breaks down doesn't panic personal foul face mask number 49 on wow. the defense. That's a wow. penalty. Automatic first That's two now on Michael Goggins and that is a huge penalty pushing La Tech all the way to their 35 yard line of Auburn pretty obvious there again Michael Goggins has now gotten his hands twice into the headgear but a heady play Ross Jenkins not trying to do too much getting rid of the football look at the penalty 65 penalty yards. You want to avoid dumb penalties. These guys are playing hard. Obviously not purposely getting that hand in the headgear, but those are critical 15 yard penalties. Yeah, Ted Roof looking for some answers. All but one of the penalties committed by Auburn has been on defense. The name Ted Roof sounds familiar. Last year he was up in Minnesota as their D coordinator. Also spent time as the head coach at Duke in the ACC. Play fake. Jenkins wants a bunch. Oh, almost intercepted. He was looking for Adrian Linwood, and it was almost picked by Nico Thorpe. You see the same thing there by Frank Selfa, wanting to take a shot after a big play, momentum play with the penalty. Nico Thorpe did a much better job of running that post corner route than Adrian Linwood. Ross Jenkins got away. Nico Thorpe's a long player, long arms. Had a good season last year. This staff really likes what they've seen from him in training camp. And that was the first incompletion thrown by Jenkins. This strike is caught, I believe. And they're going to say it's a catch. Adrian Linwood this time comes up with it. Obviously, college football, every play is reviewed. And I only think they're going to. Pass is ruled incomplete. Yeah, they're not even going to need to look at that one again on the field. It's called incomplete. This is where Ross has to be careful. He got into such a rhythm there, 10 for 10, through the post corner. Probably shouldn't have. This one just just a little bit low. The body's shielding us right now. Let's see from this look if he's able to get his hands. That's a tough view again. Boy, I don't know. It looked like his hands were squarely under that ball. To take a look at that upstairs. I didn't see that ball move around. Yeah, they're going to stop the play. I don't know about you, Eric. I didn't see that ball move a whole lot. It looked like Adrian got his hands under that football and controlled it through. Yeah, we said it before. Every play in college football at this level is reviewed. Our replay official, Dan Debinski, this is what he's looking at. Probably the best shot here. The other two, his body shields it. To me, his hand squarely underneath that football. Yeah, I think from this view, you've got no chance because the shoulder pad will cover it up. But that other view, his hand underneath the football, and at no time did I see any movement or any bobble. Now, this may be a tough break for Louisiana Tech. Remember, originally it was called a catch, but then it was overturned and said it's no catch on the field. So the replay official has to have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. And I'm not sure that's indisputable. If it had originally been called a catch sure. on the field, I, I, I think it would have been called a catch by the replay official because it's not indisputable either way, in my opinion. And this is a big one. This is a difference between third and ten at your 35 or third and three. Huge difference in the playbook and what you can call in those situations. Again, Eric, I just don't see that ball move. If you're looking at that replay, if there's any movement of that football, it's an easy, it's, a, it's an incompletion. But to me, he secures that catch through contact with the ground. I believe this should be third and three for La Tech. You see Linwood there, he's actually, I think, talking about the post corner route, not that little hitch route, the post corner route before where Nico Thorpe did such a nice job of reading the route and jumping that corner. Yeah, I don't I just don't know how that's not a catch. Are 
you still telling me that's not a catch, <laughs> Collins? You know what? To me, that's not indisputable. I agree that it's, it's well, more these, than likely a catch. To these two fellows behind the glass, <laughs> that's what they're trying to figure out as well. Hopefully that's the phone call to the ref making their decision. After review, video showed that it was a catch. Therefore, it'll be third down at the 29-yard line. So score one. You're so conservative, Eric. Score one for the replay system. It's going to give a decent chunk of yardage to Louisiana Tech. And instead of third down at 10, they're going to call it third down at four. So all that for a six-yard sure, game, but that's an important options. six yards. That's right. A lot more options in this playbook. They're going to go three wides and try to spread this ball out. And anticipate again another short pass where Jenkins has been very effective in this first half. Coming up in the two-minute mark. We've reached it. Two minutes to play in the first half. Jenkins, complete. Porter makes the first man miss and gets the first down. Inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. 11 yards for Jenkins and Porter. Awareness. When you're a running back and it's third and five, you have to know where those sticks are. And that's what a veteran like Daniel Porter does here. He realizes right away, instantly, I catch that football. I have no time to wait. You saw Josh Bynes there, the middle linebacker, a little complacent there. Daniel Porter more explosive in a big third down conversion for La Tech. And one of the reasons why this is huge for the Bulldogs is it's going to keep Auburn on the field defensively. Quite possibly, Louisiana Tech can hold the ball for the rest of the first half. But they want a bunch to the end zone incomplete. Houston Tuminello has already caught a pair here on this drive. Can't make the play being guarded by Walter McFadden. I like the call. Again, take a shot. You've spread the field. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. McFadden, the best corner for Auburn, does a nice job of sneaking his hand up there at the last minute. Really good timing, getting a feel when that receiver looks up and he turns his eyes and reaches with his hands. Excellent anticipation there by McFadden. Timeout situation. You can see it top of your screen underneath the names of La Tech at Auburn. A couple of... Uh, little dash marks they were one taken away from Derek Dooley's team they call a timeout they'll have one remaining we'll take a timeout when we come back the final 87 picks of the first half La Tech trying to get themselves another touchdown you're watching the SEC on ESPN ESPN U college football primetime presented by City as part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week Louisiana Tech Bulldogs down by three but marching. 13th play of the drive upcoming. Second down and 10. Ball on the 18 yard line. <laughs> Quick pitch. Ball bounces before Livas can make the grab. Incompletion. It'll stop the clock at 123 remaining here in the first half. And Ross Jenkins wish he could have that one back. Remember Derek Dooley this week saying at times we've gotten into environments on the road where we've been in awe of the situation and not doing the simple things. Not throwing a little simple hitch route, a five-yard hitch, something you've thrown a hundred times. That's a play in this situation that Ross has got to make. The Bulldogs need to get inside the 10 to the 8. Jenkins wants to run for it. He's got the first down. Pickup of 12. Darren Bates, the freshman, saved a touchdown. So what does the 6'3", 212-pound redshirt junior do? The play after making a mistake, he's decisive. He sees the gap in the zone defense, puts that head down, makes a play. That's the grit and the competitiveness they love out of him in Ruston. First down and goal. Handoff to Porter. No, Jenkins keeps it. And Jenkins barrels down inside the five to the four, maybe the three. And now the clock going to continue to move. And you can see the, the wheels turning for Louisiana Tech. They don't want to give the ball back to Auburn. No, and they're going no huddle themselves. They like the personnel group that they've kept Auburn in defensively, not huddling up, giving them a chance to substitute. Jenkins. Just spikes it, trying to get it to Tuminello. It'll bring up third down with 31 ticks remaining. 
And that's a smart play again. He has that clock in his head. And we've seen it a few times tonight. For a kid that's just made eight starts in his career, he understands the timing within that pocket. Often you'll see young guys hold that ball or try to fit it into a tight window. He senses that clock, time's running out, throws it away, and gives him himself another chance here on third and three. And here you see the substitution now for Auburn. Play clock winding down. With five seconds remaining. And they're going to have to use their last timeout. So they use a timeout, and where this may be a factor is if they choose to run the football now and they don't score the touchdown, point. they're going to have to hustle to get the field goal unit on and kick the field goal. Well, with a timeout on the field, let's send it back to the studio and see what's happening at halftime. Lowell. Eric, thank you so much. We got a lot coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report. That other team in the state of Alabama in Atlanta will let you know how they're doing against Virginia Tech. Also, a rare road loss for Mark Rick at Georgia. And Matt Barkley doesn't look like a freshman at USC. Thank you, Lowell. We'll be paying attention. I think a lot of people interested to see what Mr. Barkley's doing out there with the men of Troy. He's going to have a big game next week when they go to the Horseshoe and take on Ohio State. You know, we talked earlier, first couple drives for La Tech, and the concern with as much as they were on the field defensively. But you look at Auburn as well. And we said very early in this game, four true freshman backups, a true freshman playing, not a lot of depth defensively, and now their defense has been on the field. In fact, the 17th play of this drive. Third down and goal. Jenkins throws to the corner. Incomplete. Looking for Adrian Linwood. Great defense played by Nico Thorpe. Just about everybody played that the way they were supposed to. Ross Jenkins puts air on the ball. Adrian Linwood goes up and gets it. Nico Thorpe as tight a coverage as you can have. And literally, you are inches out of bounds. Nice body control, just not able to get that foot down. Nico Thorpe closes that cushion. And now a true fast freshman to attempt his first collegiate field goal. Matt Nelson from 20 yards. The tie at 10. Pretty good first half for the visitors from Ruston, Louisiana. 23 ticks remaining. Will Louisiana Tech go to halftime tied, or will Auburn have a chance to score one more time before the break? Welcome to the Now Network. Currently, thousands of people are enjoying the new Palm Pre from Sprint. Its revolutionary web OS allows multiple applications to run at the same time. Millions are using the Simply Everything plan. Each is saving $1,200 over an AT&T iPhone plan. Together, that's billions of dollars. Enough to open a Dunkin' Donuts in space. From America's most dependable 3G network, bringing you the first and only wireless 4G network. Get the Palm Pre, only from Sprint, only on the Now Network. ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by City as part of Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Weekend. How do you feel if you're a fan of Louisiana Tech and you're just surrounded? You're wearing your blue trying to feel as loyal to your team as you can, but you're just surrounded by a sea of orange here at Jordan Harris Stadium. I guarantee you every 1,500 of those people and all these La Tech coaches in the booth next to us, Derek Dooley on that sideline, they would take 10-10 to be in this game, in this environment. It's what they do, it's how they play the game. That's why they've been seven and three in one possession games. They wanna get this game to the fourth quarter and make the plays then and find a way to win. Ontario McCaleb, freshman from Fort Meade, Florida, back deep. He's not gonna have a chance to field this one. High spinner, caught at the 34 yard line by Tommy Trott, the senior tight end. He barrels forward, picks up a handful of yards. Turn of nine for Trott. That's a smart play, I think. I don't think you want to kick it deep there, but you'd also like to see the freshman kicker just get a little more length on that pooch kick. Matt Nelson, the true freshman, handled this environment, the PAT, the field goal. In this situation, ideally, you'd like to get it 
at least to those wedge guys at the 20-yard line, not the up men at the 35. That's Auburn with good field position. Decent field position and two timeouts to work with. Maybe La Tech doing Auburn a favor with that short kickoff. Now a conservative play call here. Wrap around handoff to Michaela. And Michaela turns a conservative play call into a pretty big gainer. Gain of nine on first down, 10 seconds remaining, first half. And Christian Lacey that time, the defensive end. Got to try to keep as much contained you can. It's difficult. Ontario Michaela, a highly recruited guy. He's got some jets. You got to try to keep him within that tackle box. Auburn may need to get about 20 yards here to get into field goal range. Probably just one more play if they want to attempt the field goal. Todd, complete. They're going to have enough time for a field goal. But they've got a timeout. They use it. Completed to Mario Fannin, a pickup of 16. And this is going to be a longish field goal, but at least they're going to give it a shot. And over this season, you're going to hear a lot about Mario Fannin. 225 pounds. We saw him struggle on the punt return. First punt return in his career here at Auburn, but that says something about the caliber of athlete he is. 5'11", 225, capable of returning punts, and been obvious in this first half, capable of stretching the field and getting down the middle. So a short kickoff, giving Chris Todd and the Auburn Tigers a manageable opportunity. A nine-yard run and a 16-yard pass play is going to set up a long field goal attempt for Wes Byram, who's got a pretty good leg. Byram last year along at 52 yards. See the numbers there earlier. Chris Todd, 6 of 10 in this first half. I think Gene Chizik and his staff would take that as well. He's played a little conservatively at times. He's not let it rip and anticipate it down in the red zone. Maybe as much as they wanted, but he's also not hurt there. No critical turnovers in this first half. This is going to be a 49-yard field goal. He's done this before. Remember a high of 52 a year ago. It's online. And it's good. What a way to end the first half of football for the Auburn Tigers. Off the right foot of West Byram from 49. And Auburn goes to the locker room feeling good about themselves up by three. That momentum can often turn, Eric. You want that momentum going into half. You've got to reclaim it coming out at half. Little details, just a little short on your kick. Losing contain on the edge. They set up that field goal, and Byron executes, gets some momentum for the Tigers. So just like that, the stadium here at Auburn University comes alive. It's a 13-10 lead for the Tigers as we go to half. Now let's send you to the studio for Low Palindo with the Sports Center here. Eric, thank you so much. A lot has changed. ourselves a ball game. It's a three-point game at the break. Auburn, they're in a dogfight right now, only up on Louisiana Tech by a score of 13 to 10 with Brock Hewitt. I'm Eric Collins. And, well, the Auburn Tigers don't know if they really wanted to, but right now they've got them some sense of work to do here in the second half. They do. They played hard. I think you look on both sides of the football, a lot of intensity, just some key mistakes, and 65 penalty yards led the way, and it was in all varieties. It was a pass interference. It was a face mask it was a face mask it was a face mask just 15 yard chunks you can't afford to give a team like louisiana tech you allow them to hang around a bit you also fumble ben tate a critical fumble in the red zone going in to score so plenty of mistakes for gene chizik and his staff to correct at halftime and really are fortunate to be up 13 10 in this ball game yeah let's give credit where credit is due louisiana tech quite often they were forcing those mistakes Louisiana Tech had some very good things happen to them in the first 30 minutes of and play. And it started with their quarterback, Ross Jenkins, a guy that's a winner. That's what this staff has labeled him. He takes care of the football. 
and I thought played with some real nice poise in that first half. He was accurate, he was decisive, both throwing the football and at times scrambling. He avoided the negative play. He put them in third and manageable situations. And when the time called, a big touchdown pass to start that first half. Well, both offenses so far through the first half of play ahead of the defenses, both Louisiana Tech and Auburn forced to punt just one time in the first half. That means we had a lot of long drives back and forth. And in total, we had a couple of touchdowns and three field goals made. Time of possession close to even, total yards not too far apart. Maybe a big issue for Auburn was that penalty number. Five personal, well, four personal fouls, five total penalties. And we're ready to play. Wes Byron, who ended the first half with a 49-yard field goal, kicked this one off deep to Phillip Livis. Livis very dangerous. A couple of kickoff returns for a touchdown a year ago. This time swarmed and stopped at the 24-yard line, a return of 22. Let's go down in the field. Beth Mowens had a chance to talk to the coaches. What did they say, Beth? Well, Eric from Gene Chiswick, obviously upbeat after the uh, last second field goal. What he called try hard penalties, what you guys were just referring to, the, to, to obviously too many of those. But he thought other than the turnover, they were sound offensively. For La Tech, execute the simple thing, said Derek Dooley. Hang around as long as we can, make plays late. DeAnthony Smith, their defensive lineman, also expected to return, guys. Thank you so much, Beth. Yeah, that was a big deal. Boo Smith played virtually none of that first half. Oh, the throw is behind, and it's a dangerous toss, almost picked off by Darren Bates. Something we didn't off. see, sure. Something we didn't see, Eric, in that first half at all was a real misfire from Ross Jenkins down the field. Short-armed a couple hitch routes. I really like the call coming out in the second half, trying to establish that momentum right back that Auburn gained with that field goal. A well-conceived play action pass tied in down the middle. You got to hit that one. Daniel Porter in the backfield. They give it to him. Porter runs on second and 10 and picks up a yard. If that, middle of that defense for Auburn, Mike Blanc, Nick Fairley, Antonio Coleman all combining to stop the senior from Baton Rouge. A tackle to tackle in that first half. Not a lot of production in the run game. The run game was better outside. It was better in some of their draw game. Ross Jenkins was very efficient throwing the ball in that first half. Auburn's been stout in the middle of their defensive line. We haven't had a three and out so far today. This could be it. If Auburn could stop him on third and nine. Jenkins swarmed and brought down. Able to get the ball out, but no chance for the completion. Nick Fairley with the pressure. Just a one-on-one -on -one situation there for Nick Fairley and Jaron Miles, the right guard for Louisiana Tech. Just stood up too high. Look at the level. Nice little spin move there by Nick Fairley. It's about pad level. Nick Fairley's a big man at six foot five. You allow him to get on top of you with that spin move, you have no chance. Forces the incomplete pass. Fairly a J.C. guy a year ago playing his first Division I game, and he's opening up some eyes. Often those big fellas, they just use that bull rush. Nice to see a guy capable at his size of using that spin move. Second punt of the day for Cade Glasgow. Freshman, poor kick, but gets a great roll. Picked up by Mario Bannon. I think they maybe it called for a fair catch and then tried to run with it. So a 49-yard boot for Glasgow, and Auburn will take over for the first time here in the second half. ESPNU's coverage of college football continues on ESPNU later tonight as Prairie View A&M, the Panthers, take on the Tigers of Texas Southern. College football primetime on ESPNU and ESPNU HD tonight at 10.30 Eastern time. That is a SWAC game, so an early season SWAC conference tilt. Chris Todd, what did you think of his first 30 minutes of play? Yeah, he didn't make any mistakes. I think that's vital. He took care of the football. I think he'd like to have a couple of throws back, but he really managed the system well. Wants to throw on first down. It's complete. Finds Terrell Zachary. Junior with the grab pick up 11 on first down. And that throw is very different. Same route they ran in the red zone in the first quarter. Just a little pivot route on the outside. And this time, Todd does a met much better job of anticipating the throw, getting that ball in the air before Zachary turns around. 
That's just the second completion on the day for Chris Todd to a wide receiver. On the run, Ontario Michaela scoots out left side, close to the first down marker. Pickup of nine. Finally pushed out of bounds by Olajuwon Page. And Auburn's offensive line has done a nice job getting to the second level, getting their hands on these Louisiana Tech linebackers. In that case, Jay Dudley's got to do a better job of trying to get off of these linemen because when they've gotten their hands on them, Auburn's won those battles. I saw that play selection. Over two of every three plays have been a run for Auburn. Todd throws it. Incomplete. Fannin had it, then dropped it. He was belted and couldn't hang on. Josh Victorian back deep. Antonio Baker also putting in a lick. We've not called Antonio Baker's name a lot, which is surprising for a guy who has over 300 tackles in his career at Louisiana Tech. But that time does a nice job down the field of separating Holding the receiver from the ball. 57 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Now, so the bad news keeps on getting worse for Auburn. Not only an incompletion, but now that play wiped off the books, and it's going to be a negative 10 because of the hold. And you see the impact here of having DeAnthony Smith back in the game. Obvious there, he gets good penetration. He's one of the few defensive linemen for Louisiana Tech that's going to be able to penetrate. All Isom could do there was grab on, and there you see the nice contact by Antonio Baker. Second down and 11, end around. This time, this is Michaela who gets back basically what they lost. And it's going to bring up a third down and short. Caleb getting extensive playing time as a freshman, splitting time in the backfield with Ben Tate, the senior. And as he develops in his career and even this season, that's going to be quite a one-two punch with the size and power of Tate and the quickness of McCaleb. Third and three, once again, a quick snap. Todd sets, throws complete across the middle. Darvin Adams, his second catch ball is loose. And Louisiana Tech has the football. Bulldog football, second turnover of the ball game. Olajuwon Page comes up with the recovery, and Gene Chizik's club has the ball ripped away. And what tremendous effort from Adrian Cole, the middle linebacker here. I thought Chris Todd did a, Todd did a fantastic job of being patient. Patient in that pocket, not finding one or two, coming back to his third option. And watch the middle linebacker. Adrian Cole comes back, peels back into that play, rips his arm through. And that's all Louisiana Tech does. That's why they were plus eight last year in turnovers. They know how to take the football away. So a quick change, good field possession for Louisiana Tech. Trying to capitalize, Livis with the catch out in the flat, jumps out of bounds after a gain of eight. We talked about Auburn hurting themselves in that first half. And what do you see now in the second half? A critical holding call. An even more critical fumble and turnover. Porter with the carry. Gets into the secondary. Down to the 35-yard line. Michael Goggins finally brings him down, but a nine-yard gain. And for one of the first times tonight, I sense this crowd a little hesitant, Eric. Now, they've taken some of the win. Mistakes by your home team will do that. And look at Louisiana Tech continuing to keep that tempo up. Another carry for Porter, and this time he is met and dropped. Antonio Coleman, among others, on the stop. Daniel Porter is going to be a sore guy tomorrow. You take these blows from 300-pound <laughs> men, and Antonio Coleman's about 255, but plays with a lot of speed. I guarantee you he will be sore tomorrow morning. Slow developing play, Jenkins heaves it up deep. Nobody home except for Auburn, intercepted by the freshman, Darren Bates. Back-to-back -back turnovers. That's the second time they've tried to run that slow developing play pass. One of the advantages of being up here in the box is I get a chance at times to see the reaction of the coaches next to me. And Selfo, offensive coordinator Frank Selfo, very unhappy with that very uncharacteristic decision by Ross Jenkins. 
you felt the momentum change. Auburn makes a mistake. They turn it over. They give you a chance. Frank Selfo calls that play, and very specifically to a quarterback, either you have it or you sail that ball out of the end zone. You just can't make those critical errors when you're on the road. That interception by Darren Bates, a true freshman playing his very first collegiate game. That says something. Out of the end zone. Hand off, Ben Tate. Rumbles out across the five, down to the eight yard line. Earlier today, Ben Tate in his career going over 2,000 yards. Quite an accomplishment. Believe it or not, he's actually just 13th all time in rushing yards with Auburn. He's got some great names ahead of him still. Bo Jackson, Cadillac Williams, James Brooks, Joe Cribbs, Stephen Davis, Brent Fullwood, Ronnie Brown, all guys who have fantastic NFL careers. That's just half the list. On second down, incomplete Oof. trying to find Terrell Zachary. And that's an awfully dangerous throw. A veteran safety on the one side, you saw the freshman Bates. He's been coached, stay deeper than the deepest, does a nice job with the interception. On the flip side, a very veteran safety in Antonio Baker there, reading that route in zone coverage, nearly gets his hands on the ball. La Tech would love to get their defense off the field. It's third and four. Todd uh -oh. has a man wide open. Zachary, what kind of speed does he have? Good enough. Touchdown, Auburn. Are you kidding? 93 yards. Pretty simple. Eric, you run that out on the sand lots. If those corners start to jump the quick routes and are sitting on their routes, I tell my buddy on the sand lot, you know what? Just run it out and up. Just run right by him. And that's exactly what Terrell Zachary did to Josh Victoria. And he bit on the fake. It's an out and up. And what an enormous play to energize the 86,000 in this stadium. Terrell Zachary looking a lot like Alexander Wright. Maybe a Frank Sanders back in the 90s. 93 yards. How about that for a touchdown to get things going here in the second half? This is Deep Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. 20 to 10. The Auburn Tigers doubling their pleasure over the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. An exclamation point put on there by Terrell Zachary. The longest play in Auburn history. This is the 117th year of Auburn football. 93 yards pitch and catch. Chris Todd to Terrell Zachary. Get yourself a drink of water, young man. This place is rocking. Kickoff. Low bouncer. Livas will have to pick it up. Doesn't get back to the 20 yard line. Let's go down to the field. Beth Mowens, what's going on? Well, Chris Todd told us this week that he doesn't even think anymore about his surgically repaired shoulder. He says this year it's just see and react. And it's also because last spring, before he could throw, he was at practice every day visualizing all the throws he would need to make, taking mental reps. He says this season he feels so liberated because he doesn't have to think about it. He can make any throw in the repertoire, guys. And that was a dandy throw down the right sideline, just what the doctor ordered. Opportunity for Louisiana Tech to stay in this ball game. They need a significant drive. First man through, Daniel Porter gets out to the 21-yard line. In case you're wondering, that's the longest play we just saw in Auburn history. It erases a play set five years ago on this field against Louisiana Tech. Longest play before that touchdown to Terrell Zachary was back in 2004, Auburn against Louisiana Tech. Silas Daniels, an 87-yard touchdown pass from Jason Campbell. How about that? Second and sixth, fake the handoff. Play action, Jenkins wants a bunch, has a man. 
incomplete. Cruz Williams had a couple of steps on Nico Thorpe with the pass a little bit wide of the mark. And Cruz Williams is the guy down the field that can stretch the field for Louisiana Tech. Just a young kid. He redshirted last year. One of the rare freshman receivers that was able to redshirt due to injury. 6'3", 195, a former commit to Houston in Arkansas. They feel fortunate to have him and really feel as he progresses in his career, grows into that body, he'll make a, have a chance to make some plays down that football field. Third down play. Jenkins underneath. Livas wasn't looking. Incomplete. Punt team will have to come on. Yeah, Ted Roof tonight's played a lot of zone defense, been conservative. Keep that guy in center field. One of the rare times you've seen tonight, some man-to-man -to -man defense locked down there on Libus and company. The momentum has squarely turned one way, and you see that emotion on the sideline from Chief Jizik. He says, finally, we got momentum on our side. Auburn didn't force a three and out against Louisiana Tech at all in the first half. They've already done it twice here in the second half. Anthony Gully back deep for the first time today for Auburn. He feels it, makes the first man miss, but can't get away from the second man. He is brought down with a thump. Good open field tackle is made. Timeout in the field. Auburn will have the ball once again when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Auburn, Alabama. 20 to 10 is our score. The homestanding Tigers on top of the Bulldogs. Well, here's something cool that we'll be doing all season long. ESPNU Campus Connection, a program designed to get the pulse of the campus directly through student-generated content. There is no greater feeling than sitting in Jordan-Hare Stadium and watching Nova, Auburn's live Golden Eagle and seventh Eagle to take flight on the plains, circle the stadium, and land near midfield as 87,000 fans put their orange and blue shakers in the air and yell, Eagle! For Eagle! Hey! For ESPNU Campus Connection, this is Alicia Ham. Fantastic job, Alicia, but I could have sworn that she said Jordan Hare as opposed to Jordan Hare Stadium. We'll work on it. First down play for Auburn, Mario Fannin. Stays alive for a while and manages a gain of three before Matt Broha makes the tackle. It's a critical juncture in the game for this defense of Louisiana Tech. They've been, the positive is they forced two turnovers. The negative is at times they've not been able to get off this field. And right now, as I said earlier, this momentum has shifted in Louisiana Tech, just a critical time to get a stop. Wildcat formation, Cody Burns into the game and Burns hands it off. They go right side. Michaela, close to the first down. It's going to be short. Pick up a four. It's going to bring up third down, two, maybe three. And one adjustment you've seen as well from Gus Malzahn is not quite as up-tempo. I think they made the decision that, listen, we're physically controlling the line of scrimmage. Let's line our guys up, get everybody set. We don't need to get the confusion and the speed going. Let's get in the best play. Third down and two, Todd back in the ball game. First man through is Ben Tate, and Tate is stood up. It's going to depend on the spot. Let's take this time to send you to a, the studio for another in-game update with Lowell Melinda. Eric, thank you so much. The update on Heisman winner Sam Bradford. Sprained, throwing shoulder. Simple swing, sling, excuse me, and some ice on that shoulder. He will not return to this game with Oklahoma up by three. That is massive, a big development in that ball game right there. No, it just shows you one play. Last year you saw that in the NFL. <clears throat> Looks like a first down here for Auburn. You saw that, what, in the first quarter with Tom Brady last season in the NFL. You have a marquee quarterback, and they're not invincible. And one play can quickly turn the fortunes of your season. Not only Jermaine Gresham out with a knee, now your other star offensively in Bradford with a sprained shoulder. Now, Brock, you played the position. I'd imagine a collarbone injury is a big deal. Not a good one. Inside handoff. Michaela takes it out around the right tackle and gets across the 50. On first and 10, he gets 10. And didn't you like Gus Malzahn yesterday describing him? He said, yeah, he's a young kid. He's going to make some mistakes. But there's certain times in practice 
where he'll take that ball, he'll hit that gap and explode. And it just looks a little bit like that McFadden. Not McCaleb, McFadden that he had in Arkansas. Just a little bit. The same kind of burst and explosive ability. Man is down. About 15 yards away from the line of scrimmage. That's one of the defenders for Louisiana Tech. I believe that's Ramon Randall. It is. It is hot and steamy. Temperature at game time was 84 degrees, humidity above 50%. We actually had a little bit of a drizzle, I'm told. I actually didn't see it. But at halftime, I was told that it was drizzling, but it was very light. But just one of those hot, muggy South Alabama nights. We're starting to see this Auburn offensive line, DeAnthony Smith in that first half. And now Randall down here. Just a very physical group. If there's a strength, I think, to Auburn's team right now, they've got some nice pieces on that defensive line, but this offensive line really has an opportunity within this scheme. Yeah, and you see it looks like awkwardly there, Randall just hyperextends the knee. Within this scheme, they have a chance, I think, to be very successful. A lot of the guys cut weight last year. Tony Franklin's spread system, he wanted guys to lose weight. Lee Zimba was not comfortable playing at 290. Well, they put that bulk back on. They've really worked on their conditioning. And I think as this season wears on, really has a chance to be the identity to this offense. Todd wants to throw on first down and 10. And again, he wants a bunch. And again, he's going to Terrell Zachary. This time it's incomplete. Good defense played by the junior, Olajuwon Page. Lajuan Page, a junior college transfer. You see Josh Victorian out of the football game after giving up that long touchdown pass. I think you also saw number five. It helps to identify. It's easy on us up here in the booth at number five at D tackle. DeAnthony Smith again pushing the pocket. Don't see too many defensive linemen wearing a single digit. Todd tries the right side. Incomplete. Pass bounces before it can get to D'Angelo Benton. Benton's been fairly quiet today. He's one of those ballyhooed freshmen that Chris Todd has at his disposal. Bunch of good young receivers here. And you see a conversation there. Todd felt like he threw that early, which is what Malzahn is preaching him, but Benton was just a little bit deep on that pivot route. That's what happens with a couple first-year players in this system. Third down and 10 on the out again. Misfiring, trying to get it to D'Angelo Benton. So three consecutive incompletions, and the Auburn offense will give way to the punt team. And you watch real closely here. I'm watching Gus Malzahn as this team runs off, and Trooper Taylor, the receiver coach, right in the ear of the young freshman Benton. If you're going to run this offense with precision, you've got to run those routes at the right depth. If you're asking your quarterback to throw that ball with anticipation, he's got to trust his receivers will be at the right depth. An earful there for the young freshman. High punt. Livest. Fair catch called for. Fair catch made at the 13. Punt of 36 yards. No return. We'll take a timeout. When we uh, come back, we'll weigh in on the eternal debate. Toomer's Corner Lemonade. Is it the best you've ever tasted? Welcome to the Now Network. Currently, thousands of people are enjoying the new Palm Pre from Sprint. Its revolutionary web OS allows multiple applications to run at the same time. Millions are using the Simply Everything plan. Each is saving $1,200 over an AT&T iPhone plan. Together, that's billions of dollars. Enough to open a Dunkin' Donuts in space. From America's most dependable 3G network, bringing you the first and only wireless 4G network. Get the Palm Pre, only from Sprint, only on the Now Network. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Welcome back, everyone. Auburn, Alabama. They call this Tumor's Corner because Tumor's Drugs is 
one of the corner scores. Doomer's Drugs is known for their fantastic lemonade. My partner Brock and I, we actually were given some. This is fantastic. What do you think of the stuff? It's a little tart. <laughs> I'm a big... to be critical. <laughs> it's really good. Tart is good in but lemonade. I, yeah, but I guess they got the sweet tea to offset it. Quarterback keeper, Ross Jenkins. Jumps out across the 20 to the 21. Beth Mullins, I hear you have some lemonade as well. How's yours down on the field? Well, typical, you guys get to talk about the lemonade, which I think is very good. But also, of course, at Toomer's Corner, after you drink your lemonade and a big win, you get to toilet paper Toomer's Corner. Now, Eric, I know you are very attentive to detail. So the Mullins Research Group was actually down there earlier today. You want to go one ply single roll. It's much lighter. Oh. It'll give you the distance, the accuracy, and of course the <laughs> unraveling of the paper. The two plies and the quilteds, they stay on the roll too long. <laughs> Perfect. That's the type of in depth information that you need, and only Beth can deliver. Lyle Feet, his first carry of the season, loss of two. Antonio Coleman jumped on his back and rolled him to the ground. Well, Beth, a little follow up question. I'm curious. If you want a TP, Tooper's Corner, where do you get the toilet paper from and do you have to plan ahead a day before in advance? We need to do more research on that one. I can't imagine there's just a big run <laughs> at all the supermarkets and grocery stores to get the toilet paper after a ball game. Third down and five. Bulldogs want to stay on the field. Quick pass is caught. Linwood can't hold on. Adrian Ludwood had a diving grab slip through his fingers. And once again, you're in a third and medium situation. And Ted Roof, Gene Chizik, and company defensively dial up that man coverage. Tremendous throw there on third and five on that skinny post, deep slant. That ball could not have been put in a better spot. And Adrian Linwood, unfortunately, upon contact with that ground, was not able to sustain that catch. Hats off to the Auburn defense. This is now the third three and out they've forced here in the third quarter. Lasco, another punt. Anthony Gully lets it bounce, and it takes a great roll if you're an Auburn Tiger fan. Punt of 33 yards. Now season opener for both these clubs. We're in Auburn, Alabama, Jordan Hare Stadium. 117th year of Auburn football. Offenses were dominant in the first half. We only saw one punt from each side. Auburn very fortunate to go into the locker room on top 13 to 10. They were able to get a 49 yard field goal right as the first half wound to a close. New head coach for the Auburn Tigers, Gene Chizik, coming over from Iowa State where he really struggled over the last couple of years trying to win in his debut. And off. Left side, Michaela, the freshman. A good gain on first down. When Tommy Spangler has his guys Monday morning watching this film, it's going to be very simple. Their containment, whether it's been their defensive ends, in that case, Tank Calais, the weak side linebackers, got to keep your edge. Another quick snap, Michaela. Goes out of bounds. Pick up of 13 out of the 30 yard line. See more of this substitution now. Guys running in and out. Gus Malzon characterized this system a two minute offense with the ability to run a power run game, and we've seen that tonight. Another give to the freshman, third in a row, and McCaleb pays it off with a pickup of four. Now, will McCaleb be the next in the line of? Great Auburn running backs. Of course, Bo Jackson, Heisman Trophy Award winner. Just one of many, Stephen Davis. He was fantastic, had a probably even better pro career than college career. And Cadillac Williams coming off an injury with Tampa Bay. All sorts of ability he had in that backfield with Ronnie Brown. Four straight carry for Michaela. Pretty good names, some huh, Rock? Yeah, I think I'd stack that up with just about anybody in the country. Eisman Trophy winner, tremendous pro running backs, a lot of talent to come out of Auburn. Fifth straight run for McCaleb. There's a flag on the field. If the play stands, it's up for a first down at the 15-yard line. And whenever that flag's thrown 
Within the interior of the line, you can guess holding. Holding, number 66 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. You see Mike Berry there with the, with the critical hold. He had a nice block earlier on the touchdown run. You tell me, tell me another college can name, put that many running backs on a screen. Oof. After the penalty, oh, a little flea flicker. Incomplete. Cody Burns, last year's starting quarterback, looked like he was going to run it, decided to throw it, and the pass too strong, looking for the tight end, Tommy Trot. And I'll tell you what, you give a lot of credit to Elijah Juan Page. Josh Victorian bit on that out and up, critical 87-yard touchdown pass. After that play, they've inserted Page, a junior college, spent last year at the Georgia Military Institute, and that's twice now. He's done a very nice job on plays down the field, of playing sound technical football. Wes Byram has made a 49-yarder today. This 47-yarder should be a tip shot. And it's good. Third field goal of the game made by the junior Wes Byram. And the biggest lead of the ball game. Auburn on top of La Tech by 13 now. Monday evening, catch two college football shows on ESPNU. First at 5 Eastern time, Crunch Time will deliver the entire closing minutes and moments of all the significant and close college football games from the previous weekend. Then at 6 Eastern time, Lowell Galindo, Tom Luganville, and former Auburn head coach Tommy Tuberville, they will dissect and analyze the new polls and preview the next week's matchup on ESPNU Inside the Polls. That's crunch time at 5 Eastern, followed by Inside the Polls, presented by 76 at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Well, Brock, is this the time of the ball game when you would expect a smaller WAC team to wear down against a bigger, stronger SEC team? You know, it can be. This, this Louisiana Tech team is scrappy, and I was watching here during break, and Derek Dooley, right in the faces of this kickoff return team, Derek Dooley understands Man to man, they cannot match up physically, to your point. But they've won games over the last two years here at Tech with special teams. Touchdowns outside of those offensive touchdowns. Three in the return game last season. And he implored his troops there to gain some moment, get some yards on this kickoff return. Their best option, Fielder. This is Livin. Livis shot across the 30 to the 32. His best return of the day, a return of 25 yards. And you watch Derek Dooley run a practice, a Friday practice. And he coached special teams for Nick Saban at LSU. And we all know the quality of coach Nick Saban is and the demands he puts on his staff. And you watch Derek run that Friday practice. And he has, it's detail, it's technique, because he knows if they're going to come into an SEC environment, they can't just be even in the special teams. They've got to find a way to win that part of the game. Tyrone Duplessis, true freshman, tries the middle, pick up of a couple. You'd imagine Derek Dooley would be a details-oriented guy. He's got to be. His other job, not only just the head coach, but he's the athletic director. He is the only man in all of Division 1A football to be both head coach and athletic director. And have a law degree to boot. Not a, not a bad resume. Not bad bloodlines either. His father, Vince Dooley, actually in the building today, we're told. Longtime head coach with the Georgia Bulldogs, Coach Herschel Walker, not in Athens. But Vince Dooley himself has Auburn ties. He was a quarterback here at Auburn back in the day. What you're seeing here with these couple calls is to your question there, Eric. Are you concerned if you're Louisiana Tech that you're going to wear down in this fourth quarter. Now I see you see this offense taking some minutes off the clock, trying to give those defenders a chance to get a blow. If you're really going to give them a rest, you've got to find a way to convert a third down, which you've been unable to do in this second half. Already three, three and outs for this La Tech offense in the third quarter. Jenkins wants to run for it, has the first down and a bunch more, has a block. 
Out of bounds at the 30. Just what the doctor ordered for Louisiana Tech, a run of 34 yards. And you can see that very early. Ross Jenkins now, for the third time on third down, has seen man coverage. Auburn's come up and press the defenders across the line, and when you got that man coverage and guys run off and they turn their back to you and you see a hole, as Ross did there, you have a chance to capitalize and get a big chunk of yardage. Dennis Morris, the tight end, earned his scholarship on that play. He was blocking downfield 30, years, 30 yards past the line of scrimmage. Pocket collapsing, and down goes Jenkins. Darren Bates and Antonio Coleman in the backfield. And one of the rare opportunities here where you see that clock that I talked so much about in that first half, where Ross had a real feel to get rid of the football or make a decision to run. You can't expect those guys up front with the talent of an Antonio Coleman to continue to withhold. You've got to try to find a good way to get rid of that football. Jenkins trying to set something up. Little screen in the middle of the field, and Daniel Porter brought down by Josh Fine. Fine sniffed that one out from the get-go. And I like that call versus a man-to-man a, a -man defense. Frank Selfo guessed he would get man. He ran everybody off. The offensive line was just not able to get a piece of Josh Bynes. Credit him there of reading and recognizing that screen. That was a half step away from being yet another chunk down the field. Josh Bynes, a sound tackle for Auburn. Louisiana Tech needs to get to the 21-yard line. Blitz is on, passes complete, R.P. Stewart out of bounds after a gain of six, not nearly enough. Now what do you do if you're Louisiana Tech? Do you kick the field goal or do you keep the offense on the field? Kind of in that nowhere land. Yeah, I think at this point of the juncture with a fourth quarter to go, and you've been opportunistic, you forced some turnovers, I think you've got to find a way to get some points here, but this is some real pressure on a freshman kicker, 46-yard field goal. Uh, he's already made one today. Fourth and nine. They're not going to go for it. They kick the field goal. And Nelson, how do you do? Welcome to the world of Division I football. Pretty big like for the small man. And with that, we've got a 10-point game. Let's send it back to the studio. And Lowell Galindo, Lowell. Well, Eric, as you may expect, a lot of defense, a lot of special teams between Virginia Tech and Alabama. Then just as you're about to give up on the offense, it's rolling up church, lowering the shoulder, 16 to 10 Alabama, but Virginia Tech is in the red zone. Thank you, Lowell. Uh, so far today in the SEC, a tough one for Georgia against Oklahoma State. They lose, but for the most part, the SEC has held the four. That was a physical football game. We got a chance in the press box to watch a little bit of that. Man, Georgia can fly around and hit defensively. You know Nick Saban in Alabama is going to hit some people as well. That's one thing that stands out and jumps out to me. When you look at these conferences across America, and there you see the nice drive, seven plays, 40 yards, getting some answer, getting some points. But we talked in the open about these different conferences across the country. And the thing instantly, when you watch an SEC team play, a Georgia on TV, an Alabama on TV, an Auburn here in person tonight, they will hit you. They play physical, physical defense. Yeah, it was an ugly game on Thursday, but I was impressed with South Carolina in their non-conference win against North Carolina State. North Carolina State's got some talent. That's a big win anytime you can knock off a bowl team from the ACC a year ago. Kickoff, pretty good, down to the four-yard line. Ontario McCaleb on the return. McCaleb's been a busy man here in this third quarter. Rips it out to the 27-yard line, a return of 24. And Auburn settled in a little bit this quarter. Started slow with a penalty in the middle. And here you see that. Here you see the fumble created. Again, some negative mistakes. But they have played hard all night long. That's the one thing when Gene Chizik watches this film, he's going to see his freshman Darren Bates on interception. 
going to see guys flying around. Yeah, they're still making some mistakes. They have some things to clean up. Zachary on the big play, but the effort has been there tonight. Cody Burns in the game, takes the direct snap, and Burns is brought down after a pickup of a pair. Brock, my question to you. We've talked so much about the new offensive coordinator for Auburn, Gus Malzahn, and the different things that he can do. He wants to be quick and play with a fast pace. Can they control the clock and lead the clock when they've got the lead with this style of offense? I think so because of the component of the run game. And just like you're seeing here, you know, they still have the ability to, to huddle when they need to, to slow it down and get in the right play when they want to. And I think when you have the versatility to do both, Eric, that's when you have a chance of real success. Pitch out, right side. Michaela with room, trips over his own man. He tripped over Cody Burns, but still was able to pick up 13. I think also for Gus Malzahn tonight, it's one thing to have a, a spring ball. It's another to have a training camp of three and a half weeks. When these lights go on and you see what a true freshman does tonight in Ontario, Michaela, I think he's getting a feel for what his personnel in this environment is also capable of doing. Cody Burns has been a valuable member of the game so far today for Auburn. We play three quarters of play. Four fingers in the air here at Jordan Hare Stadium. They've got 15 more to play. Louisiana Tech trailing Auburn by 10. Welcome back, everyone, to Auburn, Alabama. Third quarter was won by Auburn, 10 to 3, and they've got themselves a 10-point lead as we begin the fourth quarter. Ontario Michaela, he has been the workhorse here in the second half, and Rocky starting to put up pretty big numbers. 17th carry now on the night, 117 yards, and look at that, the first re freshman running back to rush in the season. No, that's not a bad comparison. The Heisman Trophy winner, an enormous banner of Bo Jackson, sits outside this stadium. And by the way, Gus Malzahn system over 400 yards now through three quarters. Ontario, McCaleb, and Bo Jackson. Fantastic company to keep. Second down and nine. This time they fake to McCaleb. Todd wants to throw. Perfectly feathered pass finds Darvin Adams with the grab. Adams' his third catch of the day, his longest gainer, 28. And another very nice throw from Chris Todd, but the star of that play, it's one thing as a freshman running back in space to do something. To see a freshman running back pick up a blitz as Ontario McCaleb does there, allowing the six foot three Darvin Adams to get down the field. McCaleb. Take up a four, maybe five. That's what sets those young players apart. You know, running back coaches see a freshman kid come in. Oh, he can run. He can make plays. He's explosive. But can you catch the ball out of the backfield? Can you learn pass protections? Can you pass block? Ontario McCaleb tonight showing his versatility as a freshman. Pretty impressive. Caleb starts about six yards deep in the backfield and quickly picks it up and then so. Good burst of speed to get down close to the 10 yard line. Another first down, a pickup of 14. And it sounds like a broken record tonight, but keeping that edge, when you've got an undersized running back, you have to keep him within the tackles. There you see number four, Terrence Calais, again, not keeping his containment. And you allow that guy with his speed to get outside, he's going to make a play. Todd, maybe a broken play, nothing doing. Finally gets it out to Zachary, who is dropped for a big time loss. Not often you complete a pass and lose seven yards. If there's one area tonight where Auburn has got to clean things up, it's down here in the red zone. And often a new system. You get down into that red zone, everything condenses. Things happen a little bit faster. It's not a surprise to see some struggle down there. 
But if this offense is going to continue to grow and score points, they've got to get touchdowns and not field goals. Todd, incomplete. A little bit high, looking for the freshman Emery Blake. Josh Victorian on the coverage wins the battle. And you see now a couple times for Louisiana Tech. Tommy Spangler ran a very base system, relied on some of that zone coverage, and you've seen now with the game and the minutes ticking down, starting to get a little more aggressive, bringing a blitz there, leaving one-on-one -on -one covers. That time, Victorian able to get his hand in and make a play. Third down at 16. They need to get to the one to get the first down. May as well just get a touchdown. And they go to the end zone. And they get it. They get the touchdown. Darvin Adams. He was in. No doubt about it. Adams' his first career touchdown. Chris Todd finds him in the back of the end zone. That was a tremendous throw. In the face of the blitz, you see the Adrian Cole, the linebacker, bearing down on Todd. He puts that ball to one spot, the back corner of the end zone, where his guy makes the play or nobody. Tremendous throw. Byram tacks on the extra point. Largest lead of the ball game for Auburn. They're now up by 17. Chris Todd, his second touchdown of the season, an absolute beauty into the back corner, into the waiting arms of Darvin Adams. Logan Lindo here with your in-game update. Ryan Williams making the most of his first career start at running back for Vod Tech. That's a one-yard plunge, giving the Hokies the seven-point lead at the half. Bama did miss a field goal that would have given the Tide the lead. Thank you very much, Lowell Galindo. And the Auburn Tigers have opened up their lead up by 17, courtesy of Darvin Adams. I think these receivers like this system. What do you think? I think they like the opportunities that when you can run it first and you create one-on-one -on -one situations, any receiver is going to lick his chops. And Chris Todd just stood in the face of that blitz. Louisiana Tech has to take some chances when you get into this fourth quarter. They leave yet another one-on-one -on -one situation, and Todd makes some play. Livas on the return. He's been contained fairly well so far today. Gets out across the 30 to the 32. Now, I was talking earlier about Tommy Spangler, and you know, he didn't do a lot of blitz, and that time Adrian Cole obviously a little winded in this game. But as a quarterback, you can feel that pressure bearing down on you, and you want to see your receiver just get on top of that cornerback so you can let go of that ball. And that's a throw that Gus Malzahn will tell him clearly. In fact, many quarterbacks will do a drill where they'll put a garbage can in that back pylon, and you try to drop that ball over the top right into that target. And that time, Chris Todd executed perfectly, put air, landed it right on that pylon and allowed his bigger receiver, Darvin Adams, to make a play. Yeah, more bad news for Louisiana Tech. Already down by 17. And now on the kickoff return, they're going to be called for a hold. And the football, instead of being across the 30, it's going to be inside the 15. And now you play into the hands of Antonio Coleman. You get into just a pass first opportunity with this amount of time. Watch number 52 at defensive end. Coleman lines up on the left side of the line, top of your screen. Running play. Daniel Porter, best run of the second half, a pickup of nine. Porter was very effective in that first half of play, but been a different story here for the offense for Louisiana Tech in the second half. Just not been able to convert those third downs. Not winning man-to-man -man situations. Not sustaining drives. Just one sustained drive. Keep it on the ground and they get the first down. Now we still got more football coming your way on ESPNU. College football. It's going to move to the SWAC. Prairie View A&M, the Panthers taking on Texas Southern. College football primetime on ESPNU with ESPNU HD. Tonight at 10.30 Eastern Time. 
One SWAC team taking on an SEC team earlier today. That was Jackson State losing to Mississippi State in Dan Mullins' opener with the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Took them a little while to get going, just 14 points in that first half. Again, another team in this league learning a new system. And Dan Mullins also a guy. Don't, don't let that spread system fool you. Just like Florida does, he's going to want to establish the run as well. And off on second down. Tyrone Duplessis is knocked to the ground. He's going to bring a third and short. Brock, in your estimation of the three new head coaches in the SEC, which one is closest to winning? Gene Chizik here at Auburn, Lane Kiffin at Tennessee, or Dan Mullen over at Starkville with the Bulldogs? Yeah, I think it's pretty close there between both Lane and Gene. I think they've got personnel on both sides of the ball that, that have some questions. Obviously, Aaron Berry there at Tennessee and Monty Kiffin played some defense today. I'm excited to watch what Monty Kiffin is going to bring to the SEC. Lane's father, defensive coordinator now for the Volunteers. It's a man really down in the backfield for Louisiana Tech. Who that is, can't get a number. Looks like the center. I'm going to guess Lon Roberts there. You know, that's one of the other misconceptions. You talk about Gus Malzahn and this wide open system that again tonight, 460 yards through three and a half quarters, and you lose sight of the downhill, hard nosed physical element to their camp, to their practice, to their system. I think Monty Kiffin, in much the same light, people just take for granted he runs a simple cover two system, the Tampa two you hear so much about. Monty, Monty Kiffin is a technician and a tactician when it comes to scheme, to blitzes, to finding weaknesses within an offense. And like I said, I'm really excited to watch him take on some of these spread systems like a Florida, like Gus Malzahn's system, because he's an innovative X's and O's guy as well. So Lon Roberts, junior from Kilgore, Texas, leaves. He's replaced by a freshman from Ruston, right there where Louisiana Tech is located. Stephen Warner comes in. So this is his first collegiate snap. You can tell by the all-white uniform. See how the shotgun snap goes. It's a beauty. Good one for Stephen Warner. Pass is incomplete. Good defense played on a ball that was maybe a little bit too fast for the distance it was thrown. There's a flag down on the field. This could keep Louisiana Tech on the field if it's against Auburn. Fourth quarter action. Pass interference. Number six on the defense. That penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, it is a break for Louisiana Tech. They don't have to punt it away. Instead, they will keep the offense on the field. Gene Chizik's team was in a dogfight in that first half. They needed a, a last second field goal as the, they went to the locker room to go ahead by three points. Second half has been a different story. Bigger, stronger, more physical SEC teams flexed the muscle. And they've now opened up a 17 point lead on Louisiana Tech, which is a very scrappy team that, remember, went to a bowl game last year and won. They went to the Independence Bowl and knocked off Northern Illinois. If Louisiana Tech was going to come in here tonight, there's still 10 minutes and, and anything can happen, but if they were going to find a way to win, they had to win that turnover battle. They just could not make any mistakes. The margin of error awfully slim. And they've just not been able to get it going in this second half. Another fastball had to go through a lot of arms and legs. Looking for Adrian Linwood, it's incomplete. Nico Thorpe has had a good day defensively. He was on the coverage. Yeah, they really like him. You got that sense of talking to Ted Roof yesterday. And you look at Nico Thorpe, he's an NFL body type, six foot two. He's got those long arms, he'll get his hands on people. Teamed up with Walter McFadden, the veteran on the other side. You have two corners that they feel very good about here at Auburn. Big play for La Tech. They need 10. Play action, trying to dump it across the middle of the quarter. And it's just too busy. Couldn't get him the ball. Incomplete fourth and 10. That's a good way of putting it, Eric. There's just too many bodies. That's a couple times now tonight where Tech has tried to run some of that inside screen game. But these Auburn defensive tackles have been immovable. The faithful here in Orange giving that defense a hand that's really controlled this second half. Youngster Cade Glasgow will kick it away. Glasgow's been busier than he would have liked here in the second half. 
Only punted once in the first half, but this is now punt number five in the second half. This one not so good. It'll be down close to the 30-yard line. Auburn will come back out on offense. Let's see what Gus Malzahn's offense can do as they try and work some clock with a 17-point lead. See how that wrinkle works. Boys, Auburn. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City as part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week. So far, so good for the Auburn Tiger. the Tigers in front of 81,000. Here at uh, Jordan Hare Stadium, they've got themselves a 17-point lead. Looking for more. Also looking to bleed some clock. First man through, Ben Tate. Rumbles forward for pickup of seven. Let's take a look at the quest for the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Les Miles, now in his fifth season at LSU. He's the dean of all the coaches in the SEC West. Kind of hard to believe. He's already won a national championship. While working the sidelines for the Bayou Bengals. Rob, we're going to get a chance to see what his team looks like this year. Next week in Baton Rouge. They're going to play a conference game against Vanderbilt. Pitch and catch out in the flat. Mario Fannin has the catch for Fannin. That is catch number six on the day. Gain of seven. There it is in graphic form. Right now, LSU ranked 11th in the country. They're going to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. Home game under the lights. Find that game on ESPNU. 7 p.m. Eastern start on ESPNU next Saturday. Bunch of good athletes down there in Baton Rouge. Tate again getting the carry on first down. Takes a shot. And picks up a yard. Let's go back to the studio. Check in with Lowell. Hey, Eric, BYU's McKay Jacobson is playing in his first game back from his two-year LDS mission. Welcome back, McKay Jacobson, because with the catch in the back of the end zone that ties the game, BYU would take the lead with the extra point. So no Sam Bradford out with a sprained shoulder. Thank you, Lowell. Yeah, that's... that's Maybe the biggest news in all of college football today, if you ask me. Sam Bradford knocked out a big blow to the Sooners. Just one play. That's all it takes at that quarterback position. You see it time and again at all levels of football. A real challenge now for Oklahoma to respond to that. And a challenge here for Auburn, frankly, to finish this game out over the last nine minutes. And nice to have a 220-pound battering ram in Ben Tate that you can go to after you've given Tech the Caleb all night. Yeah, Brock, one thing we've seen out of this offense is it's not really guys going back and forth in a sub package. If it's going to no. be Ben Tate's series, it's Ben Tate's series. He stays out the entire time. If they're going to run Ontario McCaleb, he stays out there until he needs a blow. Speaking of, there is Ontario McCaleb with another blast along the right side and pick up of five. I'll tell you what else impresses me about this system, and I think what a player loves in this system is everybody touches the football. Multiple receivers, multiple running backs, multiple formations gives everybody an opportunity to make a play. As an offensive player, that's got to excite you every time that play comes in that your number could be called, to your point, not just one feature guy. Are you surprised they're still running plays this quickly? Up by 17 with under eight minutes to play. I am a little bit, but that's the tempo at which they like to play. Now they're taking a little bit of time. Chris Todd will look to the sideline. Play clock still at 15. Out to the flat, easy completion. Bannon, catch number seven. Pushed out of bounds. He's got enough for a first down. Well, if you had a chance to see the game last night, Tulsa and Tulane, and you got a chance to see Charles Clay, that's going to be the role that we're going to see out of Mario Fannin. That's right. He's listed as a fullback, but he's not your typical fullback. He's not just a battering ram. They're going to run him. They're going to throw to him. He's going to be used as an athlete all over the field. Yeah, if this were fantasy football, I think he'd be a, a high-round pick because he's going to get a lot of touches in the course of a game. Dodd underneath, Tate with the catch out of the backfield. 
Now to the 11th. Now the new coaching staff came in and they said, Mario Fannin, you're going to be a fullback. He probably cringed. Sure. And then they told him exactly what was going to be expected of him. He said, I'll take it. And you're going to be a punt returner, and you're going to be a slot receiver, and you're going to run bubble screens, and you're going to run screens, and you're going to run seam routes, and you're going to get a chance to score touchdowns. Lots of diversity. On the ground, Tate barrels forward against a, an obviously tired defense for Louisiana Tech. They've been on that field for a while. Ball's down to the seven-yard line. It's enough for a first down. Yeah, and you see Andrew McCain. He's about the only guy with the hands on the hips. I think that's also impressive tonight when you look at Auburn's group up front. Those big guys conditioned really well. Pitch out, Cody Burns. Play is spoiled. Good job to get in the backfield and make the tackle take Calais. Yeah, just look at the difference between the D lineman and the hands on the hips and sucking wind for Louisiana Tech. And those Auburn offensive linemen are on the line, ready to go. And really, Ryan Pugh leading that group up front. They snapped the ball with 20 seconds left in the play clock. Bannon in from behind, pick up a four, Olajuwon Page and Antonio Baker on the stop. And now with eight catches, getting close to 100 yards. He's not the Tommy Agee fullback that we've seen in years past here at Auburn. Eight for 82 out of the backfield for Fannin. Third down and goal. Now the play clack down to 15. And again, a quick snap. Out to McCaleb. And the freshman scores the touchdown. His first touchdown of what should be a fantastic career. He is an eyeful. I like the play there. Again, more diversity in your scheme. They go unbalanced. They go heavy to the boundary there with their offensive line. They move Lee Zimba over to the right side. And now you've got a lot of beef. You've got Zimba and McCain and Barry, those guys who have laid on La Tech all night, just simply too much. Auburn even lines up to kick their extra points quickly. Extra point is true. Ontario McCaleb, welcome to Auburn University. You've been fantastic all evening long. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by City. City never sleeps. Welcome back, everyone. Question, I guess, now is will they be uh, TPing Tumor's Corner after this ball game? Looks like Auburn's got this one in the bag, up by 24 with 527 remaining against Louisiana Tech. I see the student body dispersing. I believe they are. They're on a toilet paper run as we speak. We're going to hear from a member of the student body after this kickoff. From the end zone, a little bit of a zig, a little bit of a zag. DJ Morrow out to the 20-yard line, return of 21. Time now for ESPNU Campus Connection, a program designed to get the pulse of the campus student-generated content. There is not a more iconic Auburn tradition than the rolling of Tumor's Corner after the Tigers win any sporting event. The toilet paper covered trees of downtown Auburn is a unique tradition that makes this small southern town into a rare winter wonderland. It's a celebration and an Auburn family tradition. For ESPNU Campus Connection, I'm Alicia Hamm. Thank you, Alicia Hamm. That's the question. Is this a, a rolling worthy ball game if you're an Auburn Tiger fan? Season opener, convincing win over Louisiana Tech. Uh, Gene Chizik's first win. Don't you got to give the new guy, the guy you were so hard on. Gene Chizik may be hired. The, he may be the one who's out there doing <laughs> the rolling. This has got to be a huge relief for him. With all the talking, all the discomfort that came with his hiring. Jay Jacobs, the athletic director, took a lot of grief from a lot of different people, but he's known Gene Chiswick for a long time. They worked together for a number of years during Chiswick's previous run as the defensive coordinator at Auburn back in now the early 2000s. Jay Jacobs said, I want him. I don't care what happened in Iowa State. I think he's good for Auburn. 
And, uh, well, after one game, things and, looking promising. You know, and Jay Jacobs remembered in 2004 what those defensive players thought of Gene Chizik and how much they enjoyed playing for him and how much respect they had for him when he was leading then the best defense in college football. That memory didn't fade as he moved on to Texas and won a national championship and struggled at Iowa State, played 10 true freshmen last year, tried to build for the long haul, took some lumps, losing his last 10 and going 2-10. and 10. But Jay Jacobs never forgot of how he handled his kids, his defense when he was here. That was a lasting memory. And it's very clear in spending time with him, Eric, as we got a chance to do yesterday. That Auburn man, he talks about that all the time, what it means to be an Auburn man. It's very important to him. It's not, I think sometimes you hear coach speak and you hear motivation and you hear part psychologist. To me, it was very genuine. It's been a message he's preached throughout his tenure here as the head coach, what it means to be an Auburn man, to understand the passion this place has, the legacy it has, and the traditions that it has, and he certainly embraces all of those. Out to Lyle Feet, his second catch of this drive. And Feet gets enough for another first down for Louisiana Tech. Stopped by Wade Christopher. Brock, it's just kind of an interesting situation as we take a look at Gene Chizik. He was known as a fantastic defensive play caller. Just a great leader of men as a defensive coordinator. But what he's being asked to do right now is totally different. That's right. He's not coordinating the defense. He's really not even hands-on with the defense. He gives it all to Ted Roof. So what he's doing right now is something that he doesn't have all like a lot of experience doing except for two years when he struggled at Iowa State. Yeah, and I thought he put it well. He said, you know what, being a head coach, what I learned at Iowa State and certainly what I've learned here as well is that you have very little control. You're not there teaching those techniques and all of the details. You're taking care of the big picture. Such little control yet all of the responsibility. And how many times have you seen coaches at any level, both collegially and professionally, the second time around a Bill Belichick comes to mind for me at Cleveland. Play blown up by D Ford. Sack, loss of five. He goes to Cleveland, and I understand that professional football is very different from college football, but I think the, the moral or the point of the story is that you go back and you look at that situation. What do you learn from it? What do you take from it? And he said with all conviction that had he been still at Iowa State, they wouldn't be 2-10 and 10 this next year. They took their lumps last year in that program, and that arc of that program was moving upward and onward, full belief that they would have turned the corner. Third down and 11. Maybe a four down situation for the Bulldogs. And we're going to see if it is. A sack by Mike Blanc. First sack of the season for Blanc. And the Bulldogs going backwards. They're going to have to punt it away. And Tracy Rocker, the defensive line coach. Yeah, that is the Tracy Rocker that was the Outland and Lombardi Award winner, the Hall of Famer here. He's now coaching his troops here. His big banner sits right outside Bo Jackson. There's a good shot at Tracy Rocker. And I think of Auburn, and I think of two things. I think of running backs, as we've documented, and I've all, I also think of defensive linemen. Just six foot five, 300 pound guys that play relentless football. That's what they're recruiting. We've seen it tonight with Nick Fairley, their junior college recruit. You see it there with Mike Blanc and Jake Ricks. And Jason, Tracy Rocker's trying to wind these guys back up and get them going. No doubt about it. You don't even say arguably when you make the statement. Tracy Rocker, the best defensive lineman that has ever played at Auburn, now on the coaching staff with the Tigers. Laura Galindo here with your in-game update. First full Saturday of college football, and we already have a monster upset. Oklahoma's Tress Way misses a 54-yard field goal. BYU with the upset over Oklahoma, 14-13. to And Eric, Sam Bradford, obviously the story in that one out with a sprained shoulder. Yeah, congratulations to Max Hall and BYU. I don't care who's the quarterback at Oklahoma. You knock off the Sooners, that's a feat. What about the first weekend of college football in these non-automatic qualifying BCS schools? So much of the conversation this offseason with Utah going undefeated. Well, look what Boise State does to Oregon, ranked number 14. Now look what BYU has done to Oklahoma. BYU 
Man, maybe they should join the Big 12. Eight and one in their last nine meetings against the Big 12. That is a stunner coming out of the Mountain West. New quarterback in the game for Auburn, Neil Caudill. He is the backup kid from Hoover, Alabama. Caudill hands it off. Ben Tate, another carry. This has been a big day for Ben Tate. He went over 2,000 yards in his career earlier today. Tate closing in under 100 yards. That may have gotten him over the century mark. If it is, he's the second Auburn Tiger to cross 100 so far today. Ontario Michaela, the freshman, also doing it. He's currently at 148. And Ben's going to need 852 to crack. And now he needs just 751. He did go over the 100 yards to crack that top five all time in the history of the school. 20th carry of the day for Tate. Over 100 yards and then some. That'll give him about 115 for the day. And that'll probably be the last play of the ball game. Well, next up for Gene Chizik and Auburn, they've got a conference game next week against Mississippi State. While Louisiana Tech, they've got to go back to the drawing board and take on a difficult Navy team next week on the road. Yeah, some, some mistakes to clean up, some penalties, but they were play hard penalties, as he said at halftime. A couple turnovers, you got to clean up, but this team played hard defensively. They really took it to Louisiana Tech in the second half. They played some man coverage. Their secondary played really well tonight. And Gene Chizik's got to be awfully excited about his offensive coordinator, who he hired, Gus Malzahn, doing exactly what he wanted to do, implementing that run game and having tremendous balance by also throwing the football tonight. And well over 500 yards of total offense for Auburn. They win going away with a very well played second half. Our final score, Auburn 37, Louisiana Tech 13. We'll send you to our studio for Sports Center U Studio update with Lowell Galindo and David Pollock. For my partner, Brock Hewitt, I'm Eric Collins saying so long for now from Auburn, Alabama. This is